All right. Welcome, everyone. We just had a wonderful episode of Bargain Bin, and we are back, I think, with the first show of the year. It is Speedruns from the Crypt, and I'm your host, Dicis. Uh, we have a lot of fun stuff on deck tonight. We're pretty much taking it on home, so today's theme of games is going to be, I guess, home or rooms, essentially. It's kind of a weird dynamic, but it'll be a fun list of games we have today. Uh, in order to kind of just mention what we have going on, we have Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion, uh, um, Song of Horror, and Devotion. They'll be three pretty fun games. Uh, before we begin, though, I do want to just want to mention that if you are watching this on YouTube and would like to support our live content, please consider checking out our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash gamesdonequick. As well, we have an Amazon Prime account. You can subscribe to any Twitch channel of your choice every month for free. So, hope we use it here if you would like to support us. But yeah, um... New year and kind of an interesting thing. Normally I get to take more of a just passive role of showing off the games and uh, having a bunch of cool runners on. But um, there was just a little bit of scheduling in this last episode. So <laughs> um, I get to show you guys a game. I don't normally get to do this on my own show. But yeah. Uh, I decided I wanted to show you guys one of my favorite games, one of my favorite speedruns. Um, I do a lot of horror games I've mentioned before, and very very often you see me speak, but you, I guess sometimes you might wonder, and so yes, you did correctly here, Devotion. Um, do I actually run speedruns? Do I actually do games? I do 95 of them, so I'm going to show you one of my favorites. It's called Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion, which I guess let's just hop on right over to that, yeah? Oh, I need to move a couple windows first. One moment. Just to make sure I'm all good. I'm kind of, uh, double time a bit today here. Alright, there we go. But yes, this is Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion. I think we're jumped over at this point, so... Cool. Um, the way this game is going to work is rather interesting in comparison to a lot of games. Uh, you may notice right now that I'm playing on the free version. As well, you might be hearing a, uh, what's the word? You might be hearing my keyboard throughout, we've done our best to equalize this and everything. But, the way this game's gonna work is, we're going through all 1,000 rooms, we're beating the game, and I need to move a couple here. This game is kind of long, but we're gonna be beating it within around an hour or so. Just gonna stretch my hands. The point of this game is, one, before I begin, uh, I'm gonna be doing a glitch here. Uh, you may notice I have on controller support. I don't know why it does this. I really do not know why it does this. Uh, but this is going to break the entire game, only on the free version. So we're on the free version, the original version of the game that came out in 2014. We're not on the HD. Anyway, that being said, uh, time will begin once I hit new game and then um, we go through this menu. So, three, two, one, let's go. So, for one, you may notice you're going to be hearing the, uh, the clicks and you're going to notice I'm moving weirdly. So, the whole premise of this game is that I'm going through a thousand rooms. Uh, every set of rooms is going to have their different things in general, so we'll kind of see. Uh, but for one, for these early rooms, I'm going to be moving diagonally. This game has a sort of Doom-style movement, so if you move diagonal, you actually move about, I think I want to say about twice as fast. Also, I hit the wrong... hold on. But, but, wait, but there we go. I hit Alt-Enter. I do this sometimes. As well, uh, in addition to moving much faster, I'm going to be hitting Alt-Tab on every door. What that does is it removes all of the actual loading speed in between uh, the areas. Now that you're wondering, that's weird, why does it do that? Why would Alt-Tabbing make that happen? So, the reason I can think about it is this game is programmed in Game Maker, and as a result of that, whenever you, you Alt-Tab to a Windows function like a uh, Task Manager, it's going to allow you to essentially break the game by making everything go essentially consider like a thousand times faster. Like I'm doing an artificial number, it doesn't really matter there. Um, but that's going to allow me to essentially make loads instantaneous, and it will kind of mess with the game in a lot of other ways. Maybe you're wondering, hey, this game just doors right now, what gives? Well, every 50 or so rooms, and later 100 rooms, we're going to be getting new obstacles. And the first 50, it's not too wild. Uh, the general idea is that we're just kind of making our way through. Uh, once we get to room 60, we'll be dealing with a new enemy, and then there'll be milestone rooms every time. Also, for marathon safety reasons, I'll be saving the game on every checkpoint we get, just to be sure, and that's why my estimate is higher than I would normally make it. Uh, this run's actually adapted by a lot, and we'll talk about some of the new skips that came out through it. 
but it's kind of interesting to see uh, the idea of sticky keys making a run so much faster. You can see the elevator is essentially instantaneous there because of that. Uh, I don't know if what it does in terms of FPS, but this is kind of the general idea. So, I bet you're wondering, with a thousand rooms, is there RNG? Yes, all the rooms in this game are randomly generated, and the problem becomes every room is one room. So, if I go through a short room, that's one room. If I go through a long room, that's also one room. Sometimes you have scripted rooms though. Here's a glitch. You talk to the door, you talk to the paper, and then you teleport. It's quite nice. So we're going to be dealing with our first monster of the game. Also, I forgot to pull up a very important thing. <laughs> Hold on. There we go. Uh, I need the room... Uh, which one is... I think it was... Which one was it again? There was a room button... What the... There we go. A room button that I do not remember which one it was, and it can show me all the rooms. Uh, I think it was Prince Green. We find out it. But either way, uh, we're dealing with our first major monster. This is Specimen 2, also known as, like, I call him, like, the slime guy. His mechanic is he can walk through walls, he'll slap you, and he puts these puddles of green slime on the ground. Normally, if you go over them, they slow you down by quite a lot, but they actually nerfed it recently, so it's much nicer. As you can see as well, some of these rooms will be much longer than other rooms, so in accordance to that, I gotta make sure that I'm just kind of knowing where I need to go each time. Ideally, small rooms are good, long rooms, uh, long rooms are bad. Also, I'm glad you enjoyed The Mummy. Uh, it's kind of weird going from, I guess, GDQ back to the norm, so it's, it's quite nice. You may have also noticed I'm uh, randomly alt-tabbing throughout this section. Uh, the reason why is because that's going to allow me to essentially regain all my stamina. Oh my god, do not die right now, that's bad. There we go. I gotta be very careful. Weirdly enough as well, the alt-tab glitch allows me to instantly regain all my stamina, and it also allows me to instantly regain all my health if I hold it long enough. So it can be quite useful in that fact. And yes, the rooms in this game will wildly- get out of the way! <laughs> will wildly vary as we go. Uh, going into that as well, right now we have two specimens, and you may notice that uh, the green guy is gone, right? Not quite. So specimens can randomly spawn in this run, they can uh, always randomly come back at any point. Uh, if you hear the music, normally that's a good indication that they are going to be returning. As well, I don't exactly know where I'm going each time. This game is a very just kind of reactive run. So if you see a room, you have to make a plan and think about it. Uh, so that's why you kind of see me going certain ways, I'll be doing certain things. It's all based on trying to go that way. And yes, it goes way, um, it gets w much scarier throughout the game. It starts kind of memey, but then as the more you progress to the game, it actually builds up to some pretty frightening sections. Even in the run, there's still one or two enemies in this game who will terrify me if things go wrong. Alright, we're good. There is one button that will allow me to have a cheat sheet, essentially, on some of these rooms, though. So I'm not sure I can actually find it. I want to say it was print screen. Hold on. There we go. So, this room's interesting. This is the ding room, or the puzzle room. Uh, it's RNG, it could be any of the three sides. Uh, if I know the first one, I can try a few solutions. And that kind of goes into memorizing the solutions there. Alright, so elevators happen every 50 or so room. Where's the... There's the safe one. Thank you. In the early game, it's every 50. Later on, the uh, elevators will start spawning every 100. So once I get to room 250, or I should say room 300, uh, it's going to do it on marks of 300 and not marks of 50 anymore. It gets much more difficult as we progress. Also, you, uh, another thing that you may have noticed is the design of the rooms is kind of changing. Uh, instead of having the just mansion cavern, it's kind of more like a cave now. This is the original. Uh, the reason we do the original is because these glitches only work on the original version. Uh, the HD version is about 30 minutes slower than the original because of this. Namely, the best part is the Doom style movement and the uh, being able to alt-tap through doors. A good example, by the way, is that that's a normal load, right? Here's an alt-tap load. It's pretty much instantaneous. I'm glad that you're enjoying it so far. And yes, the bread is adorable. We have a lot of adorable jump scares, like bread, ice cream, and there's like a killer face that pops out. And I've kind of talked about it so far with a few of the rooms, but this game also has scripted rooms. The annoying sound in the background is either one, my voice, or two, the sound of my keyboard, because I'm pushing alt-tab about a thousand times. We did try our best to equalize it, so keep that in mind. Alright, so 120 is about the same. 
Uh, this is a Resident Evil style reference. We get the spiders now. Uh, these spiders are going to be enemies that are a new breed of enemy. So the gimmick with them is that they're an army of spiders who will come out of the holes in the ceiling and they will chase after you. So, there are two kinds of enemies. You have ethereal and physical. This is a physical enemy. I don't know why, and I talked about this earlier, but in the beginning of the game I showed off something called controller support. For some reason, controller support allows you to entirely break the game. Uh, ethereal enemies won't attack you if you alt-tab. Um, for some reason though, physical enemies can still do it um, if you're in the room with them. So you have to be quite careful. And there are skeleton jump scares. It is a pretty interesting game on the way this works. Right now, the world record, I want to say, is like a 57 or a 56. I actually got it recently. Um, there's actually a pretty nice handful of runners, and the category differences vary on every 250 rooms. Yes, specimen 3, one of my favorites. Oh, you mean the sound of opening the, uh, the doors. Yeah, that's the sound of opening doors, like that weird creaking, that's door sounds. Yeah, yeah, the door sounds. Hold on. There we go. Cool. So we got it. Not bad. So you can't macro the key combo because it's not a native option within the game. Also, I'm not gonna lie to you, I actually don't know how to macro Windows functions. I don't run this game any more than about four hours or so. <laughs> like, if I ever do this game personally, I usually run it for maybe about maybe four hours and then I kind of give it a rest. I try not to do too much because after a while my fingers are like you know, pressing down Alt-Tab a thousand times uh, throughout however many runs. However, I should mention, well, 1 to 250 is a great category for the lot of people to start off on. Uh, it's like a 15-minute category. It doesn't take very long. In fact, I would argue that um, you can break down the categories essentially into 20-minute pairs. So 1 to 250 is about, you know, 20 minutes. Or record's like, I think, of 12. Um, 1 to 500 is like 40. Um, or I should say at this point. I guess, actually, I don't even know. It's hard to say now. But essentially, you can break it down to that 20 minute estimates, roughly. Anyway, now we're on 165. Uh, this is going to be one of my favorite ghosts in the game. Uh, this is a monster that wants to eat us. Also, we got a terrible room. Uh, it's ethereal, so you'll see I'm going to be able to alt tab. I've actually had the same keyboard for years, weirdly enough. But I'm going to be able to alt tab through here, and then she's going to be slapping me and trying to eat me. So I'm going to be very careful not to let her do that. Can I move? Thank you. Oh my god, I'm getting terrible luck, by the way. But yes, ethereal enemies for some reason get broken by alt tabbing. Uh, physical enemies do not get broken. And there's gonna be one enemy in the game that's incredibly annoying, which is that. And this is the Hot Big Show. Uh, we have these throughout the year uh, for a variety of reasons. I to keep the show going. Sometimes there's cherry, sometimes there's not. It really depends. Uh, this is just kind of regular GDQ program. Uh, the McDonald's, uh, I call it Arby's, <laughs> but uh, that's around room 700. Uh, all the ghosts in this game are all the monsters that have uh, time spawning. Also, weirdly enough, and a uh, fun thing, Specimen 1 is the little pop-out jump scares. Those are actually really risky in the run. Uh, if you're wondering why, the jump scares can pop up at any point, right? So, what's the issue with this, you might ask? Well, if I'm being chased by, like, Specimen right now 4, and they pop out, well, I can get body blocked right now uh, for a bit, and that's not very good because I can get hit. There's also some parts of the run where I might just have to purposely tank a hit, and there's not be much to do with. Also, depending on how we're going, and depending on how estimate I gener um, depending on how much time I have left throughout the estimate, I could show a few fun Easter eggs. Exactly. So, it's so far, so good. This game ends at room number 1000, that is correct. Yeah, it's quite nice. Also, there's the wall of, like, the YouTubers that they put up. Yes, so what I'm doing is I'm holding up and right. Uh, this is essentially a trick that's used in Doom speedrunning, and it is native, I think, because of the game's programming. So the way the game was designed, uh, if you hold up and right together and move at an angle, it'll be much faster than the alternative of just moving normally. Like, you move straight, it's about that fast. If you move diagonal, it's like you're zooming, and it's amazing. This is exclusive to the free version, though. Which is why I only do runs on the free version. As well, the loads are instantaneous because of the game's functions with the alt tabbing. The alt tabbing also used to be called the sticky key glitch because it was found on accident when someone was trying to play this game and they're running away from a monster and then they ended up uh, accidentally hitting sticky keys and then they realized their game was going really fast. Also, let's see if I can find the button here. 
Hey, I found it. There we go. So there's actually a room list, by the way, in an FPS chart. Um, if you're wondering where that zero is, that's a kill count. So I finally found the button. <laughs> Uh, this is gonna help me out with some of the RNG in the game. Uh, I can actually tell what room I'm in ahead of time. By the way, I'm just gonna say really quick, um, epilepsy warning. This, this is an eyesore. I hate this monster. Nobody likes this monster. Warning on that. They're ethereal and supposed to be representative of Pyramid Head. Um, if you're wondering what their gimmick is, they are very slow, but they hit like a truck, and since they are so slow, they'll kind of make all the fog pop around, and they'll make the walls kind of all red and stuff. Uh, I'll bring this up whenever we have bad eyes, like bad eye point. Oh my god, what the is this room? Ideally, I like. Oh my god, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get a hit. There's the hit. Cool. Nice. Where's the door? There we go. Nice. Yes. Uh, the HD version actually makes this section way better, but the problem is. Oh wait. All right, thank you. I'm like, I'm being careful a little bit here because they can get pretty risky with some of these locked doors. Locked doors is easily the worst one. And yes, this is the Silent Hill monster. It's supposed to be representative of Pyramid Head. Uh, it is a chick with a big sword, or a great knife, if you want to call it that one. I'm glad you enjoy them. I'm glad you enjoy them. Very often I get to show a nice showcase of other runners, but today I thought I'd show you guys a great game. Uh, for my own roster, quote unquote. Also, one is right. God. No, one is right, not left. Okay. So one is right, two is left. Uh, this is actually a nice way to determine RNG. Since I have the room counter next to me, I can just kind of tell you, oh, hey, this is where you go. And this will actually help us your room much later. Uh, this is actually a nice add-on that they had from the um, free version uh, that they updated recently with the release of the Dollhouse DLC. All right, the monster's now done. How do I see in this room? It's really a feeling of me kind of just hoping to God that it works. There we go. Alright, not bad. Oh yeah, I just noticed the Twitch title, so this is Bargain Bin. No, this is telling us to be speedruns from the crypt. Although Bargain Bin is a good friend showcase. Also, I'm not gonna lie, what? I'm like a rough call like getting a 14 on my 1 to 250. That ain't bad. A 14 1 to 250 is not bad whatsoever. Also, we got one, so this can be ripe. There we go. Yeah, like that's definitely the worst part of the game. There's one other monster that's kind of mean to our eyes, and I'll warn you when we hit that. So, yeah. Am I reading chat so I don't get scared? Yep, you got me. These games are very scary. I need chat to come for me. So thank you, chat. Alright, there's one of the 250. Guess what? She's gone. Okay, by the way, we get a gift. Look behind you. I'm sorry to horrify you, everyone, but you know I had to. Alright, let's go. I didn't need to show that, but it's fun. Uh, every 250 room, Spooky will give you some sort of gift. So the first one's just a massive jump scare uh, in order to give you a heart attack. But that's going to be a fun one, I'm Dracon. I'll kind of get more to that once we get uh, closer because uh, we're going to talk about the mechanics of every monster. Uh, some monsters are able to be avoided using the Sticky Key Glitch, which is quite nice. Um, others are going to actually have to be dealt with, and it's going to be kind of fun. How horrifying, though, right? Hey, we got Specimen 4 back. So, I mentioned earlier that monsters can randomly spawn as we go. You may be wondering, is this good or bad? It's both. It's both. What do you mean by it's both? How can it be good and bad? Okay. If I get Specimen 4, that means no other Specimen except Specimen 1 can come out, right? Um, the devs seem to like us so far. They have a speedrunning mode in the HD version. I think they're more just confused by the free version. I'm not done. I've, I've tried, I've tried like, a loose runs of Karamari Hospital. Like, I've done it on my own free time, but I've never timed it. But I know, like, roughly the route and everything. But the thing, um, the thing about the monster spawn is if I get Specimen 4, that means Specimen 3 won't spawn. Or later on, some of the really mean specimens won't spawn. So seeing Specimen 4 later can be really good. Also, if you're wondering, how do I know what specimens are spawning in the game? Uh, I know because of the music normally. And I can hear like a little battle cry kind of from the specimen very often. Alright, hold on. Alright. So, left is the worst because you can get a lot of combinations. If you get right, it's kind of the best because it's really easy just to go right, right, middle, left. So it's quite nice. It's not the same as uh, 10 corridors. It's uh, entirely randomized, and there are like, I actually had been sure like hundreds of rooms in the category. Four is the um, Japanese horror monster. Uh, it's reminiscent of things like Corpse Party, uh, Ringu, Juon, and the like. Uh, so it kind of has that aesthetic. 
Oh, so you have arcade games you can play. Uh, we find another room in Mind Beam, we'll play on, we'll play on those, because they're quite fun. Oh, wait, what am I doing? Okay, game. There we go. Why can't I run for a second? That's weird. When it's starting getting really spooky, uh, room 310. Also, unless you count that ice cream, then I guess room 290. Room 310 is the big reason people don't like doing past 250. Uh, room 310 is probably the most uh, gut-wrenching area in this game. So, the original doesn't really have a speedrun mode. Only HD does, and they don't allow infinite stamina. Uh, this is why kind of the HD, uh, the original version is nicer, because if I ever run out of stamina, I just hit Alt-Tab and I'll get it all back. And it just makes things much faster while not adding an overall benefit. Okay, so I kind of talked about this a little bit earlier. Uh, what's the problem here? Also, we got Specimen uh, 4 again. Uh, specimen 5. If you guys don't know who that is, does anyone here like Creepypasta and Legend of Zelda? Because, uh, anyone want to answer that? You may recognize there is a very popular creepypasta in existence called Ben Drowned. It was a Legend of Zelda creepypasta about Majora's Mask, I believe. Um, the whole idea here is this game is kind of a homage to a bunch of horror IPs and horror things. So this one's going to be about Ben from Ben Drowned. And uh, in particular, one of the worst enemies in this game, the Happy Mask Salesman. Uh, the Happy Mask Salesman is going to be absolutely horrifying because he is ethereal, but he acts physical. And he works similar to SCP-173, uh, or the Weeping Angel, or whatever you want to call it. Oh, what the- what was that? What was that? Where are you at? What was- Okay, cool, back to normal. So, I bet you're wondering, why am I worried about Ben? One, alt-tabbing doesn't quite work against him. He's very slippery. As well, the way he kind of works is you have two options. If you're in a short room, you can sprint to the end. Uh, he moves very fast. Uh, if you're in a long room, you have to turn around. Uh, you have no other option. Whoa! There you are. Okay. He is the worst enemy in the game by far. Uh, you want to kind of like do this back and forth at him. Uh, he'll move closer and closer. That Wait, what? Oh my god, I'm on the wrong side. Ben so much. Alright, he's giving me the business right now. Ben, Ben. Okay, now we're back in action. So, oh my god. Oh, there you are. Hey, Ben. Run two. Oh, wait. Okay, okay. His gimmick is that if you look at him, he won't attack you. Otherwise, you have to worry about him. Did I also mention that he is the hardest hitting enemy in the game? Also, why are you moving unusually fast? That is weird. Unprecedented bend. Alright, should be gone. Not yet. Alright, now I can go speed again, hopefully. Alright, he's gone. Yeah, if you hear that music, it's horrifying. There we go. Jesus Christ. You can see why uh, it goes that way. A modded overlay? Nope, this is the overlay of the game. Uh, hearing that music is the most terrifying part of any run. And now we're hitting our first actually deadly specimen. Ben Drowned, also known as specimen, I think, five and six. So, his problem is you can't actually undo Ben. We found a glitch to break every single psycho or, sorry, specimen in the game. The only one that can't be broken is Ben. We actually do kind of be 3D. It's going to get weird, and uh, I'm going to save right before that because there is a way to kind of break the game. Um, I want to make sure very carefully that we're not going to mess it up, but yes. Also, you know what's even worse about Ben Drowned? Starting on room 300, elevator spawns are no longer every 50. Now they are 100. Specimen 12 does hit the hardest in the game. For this point of the game, Ben hits way harder than most will hit. They actually had to nerf Ben in the HD version. Like, I'm not even kidding to the fact where they nerfed Ben in the HD version. Also, um, in the Spooky Jumpscare Mansion, we actually end up getting... Um, 
nicknames for a lot of people because they're based on various creepypastas. Uh, so like a lot of people might call Ben Ben or they'll call like a random RNG ghost Howard. Uh, a lot of these names kind of come in in their fan favorite community names. So it's quite nice. No, we're not going to break Ben with Alt F4. He did. He really did tell us to get bent, didn't he? This is also where the game gets quite scary for a lot of people. Like, I would argue if you can deal with Ben, you can probably just speedrun any category this game. Uh, there'll be no one in the game who's nearly as mean as Ben is. There we go. Okay, we got Specimen 4. Specimen 4's been showing up a lot today, and that's very good. She is nice. Uh, there's like one room that's bad with her. But other than that, she's actually very nice. Yeah, the free version is used because of the sticky keys glitch and uh, the diagonal movement. Which, the diagonal movement allows us to break the game a lot more. Uh, as well, there's actually a few other things that are nice about the HD ver or free version. Uh, the HD version adds in more rooms, which are actually really inconvenient. Um, as well, they can keep all the rooms in a pool. I'm getting hit, by the way. That's actually really bad. If I get that room again, I'm just going to hold a uh, stamina. Because there are times you'll automatically get hit, which are really, really bad. Also, this is one. You go this way. There we go. Specimen 4 is the Japanese uh, horror ghost. It's kind of like, you know, Ringu, uh, Sadako, Juwan, all that jazz. Uh, I'm getting hit. That's fine. And it's just reminiscent and kind of a homage to that. Uh, she's really nice, though, because her main gimmick is just, she just chases you, and she has a cool theme song. That, that's it. So, fun fact, uh, that used to be a problem in Draco. Uh, there's a specimen in this game called Specimen 9, which is an AFK monster. And for the longest time, one of the big, like, risks of this run was that if you held Alt-Tab too long, you would immediately die. Because, oh, wait, she's still chasing me? Really? I thought the music swap would have gotten rid of her. I guess not. Alright, well, that's fine. Um, but kind of going back into that, in the past, alt tabbing used to be a death sentence if you did it too long. Um, but for some reason, controller support breaks him. So he never actually spawns in. And no matter how long you alt tab, he just won't do anything to you. Also, she is being mean. Alright, there we go. You'll be doing a little bit more, though. Uh, the best way I can say, though, is that for some reason, just turning on controller support, you don't need a controller, it just breaks the game. Uh, it has a weird way of handling with the alt-tabbing and the controller support gimmick. Nice for us, but a bit bad for the specimens, I suppose. Also, let's talk about the story of this game for a second. What's the story, you might be wondering? We're essentially a reporter, and there's rumors of, like, a haunted mansion that no one's ever escaped from, so you want to go to check it out. And the moment you enter it, and you realize that you're essentially going through an endless labyrinth, and... Originally, the game is called uh, Spooky Jump Scare Mansion or Spooky Sets of Jump Scares, and the gimmick is you have to go through a thousand rooms, as she tells you. And once you get to room a thousand, you get your freedom or something, quote unquote. We'll kind of learn that, but the game just kind of drips through story beats of the specimens and how they're there, and they're all programmed to kill people, so we'll kind of check them out. Uh, I'm tapping between Task Manager, actually, funny enough. Um, this glitch only works with Windows functions. Also, you can see the elevator instantly spawns here. I should have saved the game there. I don't know. I said to not die. Luckily, the next special specimen is not going to be too bad. At room 4, it's going to be fine. And hello to you. Alright, this is good right now. Yeah, good rooms. Alright, 4 is going to be interesting. Uh, so this is going to be a reference to Gygus and Earthbound in general. Uh, also, like a little bit of Alice in Wonderland. Uh, the whole gimmick of this one... Oh, wait, I, I... There, you can see my Steam. Don't look at my Steam chat. So, this gimmick. It is a wall of Gygus. If you get touched, you die. However, um, in the past, it used to be an issue where you couldn't alt-tab. Now you can alt-tab. Um, this is still an ethereal ghost, so just kind of a cool series of hallways with fun movement. Uh, I don't really actually know the strategy for this. This always works. Go left. If you go left, you will always have the answer. I don't understand why it works. Like, I really wish I did. Just for some reason, the door is always on the left. So you'll get a bunch of random paths here, but again, if you just keep going left, you'll be fine. Weirdly enough, there's a very rare chance that a specimen can spawn here. So not only will it be chased by the Gygus ball, you can also get chased by uh, any other specimen. Also, let's see something here. I'll kind of see if I can show it off. 
There it is. See? It's cool. Getting hit by the Gygus wall is an instant death. And the gimmick is you're supposed to be- I did link my Steam. Don't- don't add me, chat. Don't add me. I accidentally hit, uh, Shift-Tab, which is the, you know, it's really close to Alt-Tab. There we go. And yeah, the original version didn't have nearly as much with it, it just kind of these rooms. There we go. I thought the maze strat was always you hug the right side of the wall and then you just keep going and eventually you'll get the answer. I could be wrong, but I haven't really been through a maze in a while. Good to know. But in fairness, I think it's pretty easy to guess my Steam name, given it's the same as my regular, you know, name. Of course, of course of all the specimens to come back, it's been. So you may notice I'm just breezing through these walls. Uh, I haven't really talked about this much because Ben was really giving us business earlier. But Ben will chase you for roughly about one stamina full of distance. I uh, can only really catch you on one full bar. So a good way of kind of gauging it is uh, if you have a room where you'll only be using one stamina bar, it's all nice and dandy. Otherwise, you gotta be careful. Gygus will never chase you again. They don't spawn back. Once you leave the room with them, that they're in, you're good to go. Wait, what, 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 what was that? What was that? Where'd they go? Where'd they go? Why am I getting so many chasms and so many bends? Okay, here we go. Why am I hearing them? That's weird. Okay, we're back to normal. Like I mentioned, you cannot run him in most rooms if they're short. If they're long, you have to play along. So it is something to keep in mind. Alright, much better. Watch it behind me, you know I am. Alright, Pong. Wait. There we go. Got it. Bit RNG, but we got it. Correct. If Ben's music is playing, the only thing that can spawn is Ben. Which is actually I in the little jump scares. Uh, however, if I get Specimen 4, Ben won't spawn. So realistically, Specimen 4 is the best thing you can have in the game, because even if I take a hit... Oh, I got this right. And if I take a hit, it's not going to be a big deal. There we go. Ben's really weird, by the way. Also, I should mention, not only are certain enemy spawns good, certain room spawns are good. If I get a puzzle room like that, I mean, no one can chase me. Behind me, IRL, well, there's my skeleton friend. I see him. There's also my game save sign and this toast. So getting the arcade room, for instance, like, you know, if you get these arcade games, nothing can kill me here. I can wait here all I want, and I can play Mrs. Spook. It's a Pac-Man clone, but, you know, it's, it's violent, and it's spooky. Look, it's Pac-Man. Pac-Man's dead. We won. Okay, let's go. Alright. So we'll keep proceeding through the rooms. We're about halfway right now. We're making great time. I kind of highballed my estimate just a little bit because I wasn't too sure on how the RNG are treating me, but it's actually not terrible right now. There we go. But you can see uh, one of the fun Easter eggs with the arcade games. Alright, Specimen 4, uh, Epilepsy Warning. It's gonna get really hazy for a second. If you see fog, just... If you don't like lights, or you don't like uncomfortable visions, just do make sure you cover your eyes. She's not being too bad right now, but... That was kind of rough. Thank you. Also, I should mention every milestone room, like 100 beats, or, you know... What the, there it is, oh my god. How disgusting. Ben hopefully won't give us the business again. Although Ben wouldn't be the worst thing I've ever dealt with during a GEQ. I'll say that right now. Ben would not be the worst thing I've ever dealt with. I've dealt with the one person worse than Ben. <laughs> and that's actually a reference to uh, a GDQ. Uh, also, thank you for that. Yeah, this one should be pretty tight. And it'll definitely go better than AG. Also, she's gone. Cheese. So this door is now locked and we're taking a shortcut. Don't worry, we'll have a good time. We just have to go through here and we'll be nice and fast. 
Oh no, we're back at room 50. Wait a minute, what? Oh no. Well, I guess we're gonna be here all night, aren't we? I don't know why the game did that, but oh well. And it's just kind of a weird vision thing. I, I think they, they toned it down in the HD version, but it just, they designed it the way they had it. We did save it, but eh, we'll just keep playing out and see how it goes. Don't worry, chat. I know a big skip. I should have done this in the beginning of the run. All right, but now we're back to room 512. Oh, wait. What? All right. Who's worse than Ben? Ricardo. During AGDQ, we had Ricardo uh, kind of bug us, so... I would rather take Ben over Ricardo any day. Yes, it's a gimmick because Spooky scares you by confusing you by putting you back to room 50, but you actually get put towards room 5. Like, you're not, you don't actually leave. Hey, the specimen 2 is probably the best in the game to get. It's a little joke that Spooky does, because every 250 rooms she'll give you a gift. So that room is a debate, as they say. But yeah, the red walls in the specimens four are supposed to mimic the other world, or specimen five are supposed to mimic the other world and all that. So now we're back to no back to normal. Exactly. All right, we're doing really good right now, by the way. Also, one of my favorite specimens is coming up in room five fifty-eight. Who's Ricardo? So during AGDQ, I did a run of haunting ground. Uh, this is during the horror block, and people seem to like me getting tortured by a guy named Ricardo a lot. Uh, it went really rough. <laughs> I want to say right now, by the way, because I had a few pe I saw a few people on the VOD back watching it. That was not scripted. That was not intended. Ricardo really gave me a that's never happened before on AGDQ. I was nervous as all heck. I was nervous beyond belief. It was Ricardo? He's the villain of a game called Haunting Ground. So he just does that sometimes. He's mean. Uh, some of them have names that really depends on community involvement. I just call it, like, Slime Guy. Uh, I'm gonna have my favorite one this time. They're around 550, and there's gonna be a lot of deer around. Uh, these deer are cannibalistic and will bite you, so you wanna avoid them. Now we have an axe. Uh, this is gonna kinda change the mechanic, because now we can attack. Like I mentioned, the deer are cannibalistic, and they will bite us. Uh, you don't want to be bit by the killer deer. Uh, getting bit by deer is bad. Alright, now we're gonna go to the store. And everyone, I want you to say this with me coming into this next room. Everyone, dear god, it's the dear god! The next specimen is specimen, I don't know, 8? And we call him the dear god. He has a banger soundtrack. Or the dear lord. If you have any deer motes, feel free to post that. But dear god, it's the dear god. Or dear lord. His gimmick is that... I think he gets more aggressive based on the more deer you kill? As well, you can't actually attack him, so he just kind of walks towards you. He's really nice, actually, in a sea of mean enemies. Is a cannibal VR at the same speed? You know what? You got me there. I guess they're not cannibalistic, I suppose, because they're eating human beings. I guess I, I guess I should say man eating here. Oh, but God. Thank you, dear. Dear God, it's the dear God. Get out of the way, spider. But yes. The Deer God is everyone's favorite enemy in the game. Like, everybody loves the Deer Lord or the Deer God. I'm glad you enjoy it. I guess, yeah, technically it's not cannibalistic unless they're eating each other, right? I'm glad we're having the discussion of cannibalism and speed. You know, it is a horror show. Get, get out of the way. Get out of the way. Yeah, they want you to join the Deer Squad. Alright, we don't have a ghost yet, we're good. Okay, so I bet you're wondering, is there a specimen worse than Ben? Yes, there is. This PlayStation 5? Yeah, exactly, you got it. Now, this game came out on PC in 2014. Yeah, so he got me once. Specimen 1 is mean, they're not very nice. Also, yeah. And no, I'm not part deer. Alright, we got Specimen 4 back, that's good. Okay, so 610 is going to be the worst specimen in the game. And people actually were asking earlier, how are we going to deal with the specimen, right? Isn't the specimen harder? Also, when you get to room 600, you get these new long hallways. We no longer get chasms, luckily, but now we get long hallway, which is just another word for chasm. So, the thing is... Uh, in room 610, also long hall 5 is which one? Of course. Oh my god! That was unlucky. 
Ooh, I gotta be careful. Get out of the way. I got double hit. Okay. Luckily, I got my health back. So this is a reference to aliens, and this one's gonna be slightly worse. Uh, it's worse because, um... You know how Specimen 4 is an eyesore and really, like, messes with your eyes? Uh, this specimen coming up is also going to be pretty bad. Uh, the reason why is because uh, every now and again it's going to try transforming through forms. And the way this is going to do, uh, happen is I'm essentially going to be blitzing through the rooms. And ideally they want to catch up to me. However, since I'm going so fast, I'll be able to. In order to do so, they're going to be going fast. So they're going to be doing this weird um, gimmicky transformation, which you'll see. What? What? Wait. What? Did... Did... What? Holy... What? I... Okay, um... I didn't know that bug could happen. I've never had that bug happen. The specimen didn't spawn. That specimen is a physical specimen. It will... There's no chase. I don't know if it's gone from the game forever. I've never had this happen. Uh, normally, it would chase you like 30 rooms. The dog room ends the chase. It does. World record incoming. World record's pretty hard. I don't know if we're gonna get close. I think it's like a 50... I do have world record right now, luckily, but... Uh, this has never happened before. But now I'm worried, because good that's ever happened before is are bad. I guess that makes sense now I think about it. Huh. Yeah. Because normally, like, it's a glitchy... That's ever happened before. You get a glitchy monster that will, like, mess with your eyes, and, like, it will drain you, and you can't alt-tab, and... We skipped it. Entirely. I don't know if it's gone forever. I hope it's gone forever. I hate that guy. He's kind of like Ben, where you can't alt-tab him. And he's the meanest specimen in the game, arguably. Outside of Ben. Also, yes. New tech in a live run? Well, I don't think it's new tech, because I can't replicate it. <laughs> I'm not trying to... <laughs> That's never happened before. Is this a good thing? The last time a good thing happened, my room powered out. See Silent Hill 2 West Coast Weekend. Quite literally, the last time I had a good that's never happened before, my room just powered down entirely. You know, you know, that's true. There we go. I guess by that logic, I'll never have my room go that way. Is it Pac-Man I killed? You know what? I agree with you. It is. Alright, we have good RNG. Mars is new? I, I mean, it probably happened in someone's casual plays, but I've never seen it happen in anyone's speedrun. Scripted? I wish it was scripted. Oh no, we have the casual the sentence. Okay. So, the run is not scripted, but chat is pre-recorded, actually. I'm lying to you. Chat is actually pre-recorded, but nothing else is pre-recorded on the GDU Hotfix shows. So you're the scripted one's chat. You are the scripted one. All right, we got uh, Sonal 4 again, or Sonal Hill Specimen 4 again. So, uh, trippy room design has a heads up. Where am I? Oh, this, this always sucks. Oh my god, where am I? I don't like that room. Where am I? What? Oh my, I know what happened. There we go. The monster confused me. Where'd the monster go? Weird. Okay. I guess I'll take that. Alright, I want Specimen 4 to go away as soon as possible. Specimen 5 to go away as soon as possible. It is the epilepsy warning, yes. God. I think the jump scare actually moved my vision. A number runner? Which number? Well, that's never happened before something else. Our chat was pre-recorded. Yes, we can do the classic, wow, what a mansion! I'm glad people are getting excited for the epilepsy warning of this monster. No more monsters? We're gonna chase one right, one right now. We're actually being, uh, chased by a monster as we speak, so, uh, 
No, there are indeed still monsters in this game. We're just mostly avoiding them in a pretty good fashion. God, I'm getting some long hallways. You didn't know Yoshi was in this game? I mean, maybe. All right, all I have to do is get to 700. Is this door the invisible place? Some doors do get kind of trippy with this monster because they will kind of blend in all the walls together, which is why I don't like this monster very much. It is absolutely hell on my eyes. Ben is still the worst because Ben's the only thing that can really kill you. This is more like it's physically hurting me. It's not in-game hurting me. <laughs> you know? This is the slight difference of two. And yes, we did pass number six. Oh god, I can't see. Ah, uh, of course. I gotta remember, room five is that. Okay, there we go. I can see again. Much better. Ah, yes, chat is pre recorded. Uh, bots? Was that? Oh, I don't know, I think anyone here would be a bot. Oh, yeah, we have the racing game now. We're gonna avoid that, though. Wait, I did the fun Pac Man one. They're nice, but we should be good to go. I think Luigi might die in this mansion. The ghosts are a little bit more meaner than a punch, like, to the back of the head. They're kind of just mauling you, I suppose. Which is not nearly as nice, if you ask me. But yeah, a lot of this game kind of goes... I'm getting a lot of safe rooms, Jesus. We actually haven't gone that one yet. Uh, it is a random room that can happen. Uh, if you see a left and a right uh, entrance, and you see a long middle, that is the trap hallway. And I actually really like the trap hallway, but we haven't gone it yet. Uh, for anyone who's wondering, there's a hallway that exists in this game uh, that is essentially a, a trap, where if you go down it, you will die, because there's a ghost that's waiting for you at the end of it. So my good name, I am indeed having out for stamina refreshes and instantaneous loads. Uh, and this game being made in Game Maker reacts weirdly when you tab to Windows Functions. So what's going to happen is I'm going to be able to essentially uh, break the game by alt-tabbing and making my stamina instantly regenerate. As well, the door load is instantaneous. I'm not, I don't have a super computer. The door load is just really, really fast. Luigi would win, but he has a vacuum. He doesn't have alt-tabbing. I guess if Luigi can just run, he'd be fine, but he can't alt-tab. Ah, yes, perfect. Alright, room 700. Now we're getting into the good stuff again. By the way, let's save the game for safety. And you can see, like, even elevators are almost instantaneous because of that. It's cool. Also, here's the Hall of YouTubers. They literally just put a bunch of YouTubers on the wall because they like them. It's neat. God. I'm glad you're all enjoying it so far. And again, if there's any questions, I'll try my best to answer them. Oh yeah, I also have a lot. Like, it, it's a big thing. Uh, how do you move forward? You mean like physically forward? You hit the room counter. Once I hit 1,000, the game is over. All right, time for Arby's. We have the meats. So, we're gonna be entering a fast food chain and we have to do a puzzle here, actually. Uh, there's a few things we generally gotta do. We have to go into the ball pit. Uh, this, or the play pen, I should say. I don't think there's a ball pit in here at all. I like how the room, by the way, is called food. Now you're wondering, what is the name of the food? Uh, the room of the name of the room? Food. It's Food Five. The sequel to Food Four. Food Six. But back to Food One. I love Food One. By the way, uh, here's a Sonic Two reference. It's the Meat Locker. Food Eight. And now it is time for the Arby's Demon. It is a giant demon trying to sell us Arby's sandwiches. See. So, what is the Arby's Demon gimmick? One, he has a really cool theme song. Two, he will remove doors from the game, and he's ethereal. So, the thing is, he preys on your knowledge of the game. So, if you haven't been paying attention to the rooms, uh, or if you're, you know, not taking your time, uh, he's gonna slap you, and you can't actually see what's happening exactly. So, you have to kind of make sure that you're able to know where the doors are. And he's pretty mean, but he has such a cool song, and he's really hit and miss. He's probably my favorite in the game because of all these facts. Like, he's so cool. Sir, this, is, this isn't a Chili's? By the way, if you're wondering, what happens if the RVs even kills you? He sends you to the meat dimension. Correct. The meat dimension. Yeah, just a standard Arby's that's haunted. That's that guy's gimmick. 
It is a fast food chain that is haunted by a, a meat demon. How much damage does it do? He does moderate damage. I think it's like four hits for him to kill. Oh, here's the trap room, by the way. So like going right does nothing. Down the middle, if you keep going, you'll eventually die. It's called Endless Hall. If you go left, you just escape. But the way this ends up going is that if you just kind of keep going, you know, that's what tends to happen. Also, given that we are near the uh, later half of the run, I'm going to use my usual hosting. So, Ickdysis, do you have any shoutouts you want to give? Yes, I would like to give some shoutouts, Mr. Ickdysis. That, that's me. I'm both the I'm both the showrunner and the runner today. It's it's weird, but uh, essentially there's been a nice um, uptick in Spooky's community members. They have a nice Discord. The Spooky's community has done a lot for grinding this game, figuring things out. And Ashi will show you a new trick that was uh, discovered by newer runners. That's quite nice. Also, Spooky is gonna give us another gift. Uh, I have infinite stamina, but I cannot run. So, yes, for 15 rooms, I'm not going to be able to actually run. It's kind of funny. Oh my god, and I got Arby's. That's bad. I don't want Arby's. I can't run away. That's fine. I remember all the doors. I don't remember all the rooms exactly. It's more, I kind of know, like, the rooms that there exist in the game, the pull of that. And... There, thank you, Arby's demon. I can't run for a while. Doesn't matter what door you go through. If it's not locked, then you're good. That's the only rule. If there's two doors and they're both unlocked, either one door is fine. Uh, however... Um, you know, you have to go through an unlock door. Also, I should mention another fun thing. Um, this game, the way the RNG is decided is that anytime you enter a door, it rolls essentially the dice. That's good. The standard version is much more common than the HD. There's a lot of runners on the HD because they like the HD, but honestly, the standard in my opinion is way better. You get to do the speedrun skips. Uh, the HD is nice for a few quality of life things, but admittedly, the standard just has a lot more going for it. I think the world record in the HD is like a 117 with an in-game timer. All this using real time is a 57. Oh, what? There we go. That's fast. All right, now we're back to running, so we're good to go. And yeah, uh, the room layout's quite nice, as you can see. Like, Hall 17, I can see what room I'm in. That actually helps a lot more than you would imagine. Alright, now we're good to go. Oh yeah, also, funny enough, uh, if you're wondering that zero is, uh, that's a kill count. So every time I kill one of those uh, little jump scares, uh, I can actually get points. And if you get too many points, you get the bad ending. That's how the good and bad endings are decided. If you are bloodthirsty and kill things, uh, you know, I don't have the heart to do I'm not going to kill him. I was going to show you a brutal display of murder. But I don't want you to feel bad. That innocent slime did nothing. That innocent cotton candy did nothing. If I see one of the horrifying faces, I'll kill that one. I feel bad. I, I can't kill them. That cotton candy did nothing to me. That cute ghost, it did nothing to me. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty neat. I'm not sure why it functions that way, but it does. Alright, we're almost on room 800, which uh, we're going to be hitting one of my favorite rooms in the game, 810. It is actually going to be a reference to one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, some of you might know it, some of you do not, but if you ever heard the Speedruns of the Crypt uh, waiting song, the little song we have in between the, the games, uh, you might recognize the next area. If you don't, well, I can introduce you to the game. It's going to be the Clock Tower Room, because this game has a Clock Tower reference. Exactly. There we go. I did. I mean, you have to go down the endless hall for a really long time. Also, I'm saving it just in case, because you never know. Okay, now we have a few rooms to go. So someone asked earlier. I think it was actually a Freedy. Um, how do you deal with Specimen 12? Like, what is the gimmick here? So Specimen 12 normally in the speedrun is actually one of the reasons why Standard is better. Um, in the Standard version, you can skip it. You can skip some of the things in there. In the HD version, it's an auto scroller. You have to wait like decades. Also, this monster's immediately gone, so haha. -ha. So, the gimmick of this room is that you need to get keys, and that's going to allow you to get more keys. So I got the key to the bedroom, so I'm going to go to the bedroom. Yes, it is a clock tower reference. So here's the thing. I'm going to hide in this closet. I can't actually alt-tab yet. I have to wait this out. In the past, we had alt-tab all of these. However, I'm going to be able to save time by losing time. This is the only one in the game I'm going to have to wait for. What's Clock Tower? It's a Japanese horror game where you are, have a giant, uh, you know, a girl being chased by a giant pair of scissors. It's this shirt. 
So. But this is the only one we're going to have to wait for. It's going to get interesting afterward. Um, what's going to happen is there's going to be a guy with the giant scythe. He's chasing us. I'm glad you think so, Billy Joe Bob. We do have a mansion escape. It just... The first one we have to wait out. Only the first one. No, RE is 120. It's the spiders, and it's like the GL labs in this game. Who built this place? Uh, apparently, Spooky's... Uh, I shouldn't get too much into it. But something to do with Spooky. Let's go with that. Correct. We're going to be saving time by losing time. So we get a key. Oh, pick that up. Thank you. So, if you're wondering, how do you save time while losing time? Watch. So, one, we got this key. And now, I'm going to do a very fun glitch. Watch. We're going to pick up this book, and I'm going to wait right here. So, I no longer need to hide, and I can instantly end it just by waiting at the door. Uh, that's going to allow me to instantly break it, which is much nicer, as you can see. As the alt tab there, I just did. Uh, given that I waited in the first room, I'm going to be able to alt tab in every other room in the game. And it won't be an issue. However, I should mention, uh, Specimen 12 is physical, meaning I can't alt tab when he's chasing me. However, I can alt tab during his waiting rooms. So what's going to happen right now, you're supposed to wait here, it's just to hide in fear. I'm going to pick up this key, and I'm just going to wait right here. Once the music ends, we're good to go. And greetings. Hope you're having a good day. Greetings from Peru. Very nice. Hope you have a nice day today. Okay, and we're almost done with 810. By the way, this is horrifying. Uh, he is waiting for us right there. So, Specimen 12 is the fastest uh, specimen in the game. Uh, he moves like an actual truck, and you have to be very careful with him. You can alt-tab in the beginning of each room, but outside that, you cannot alt-tab. Alright, we gotta run. I don't know how long, but we're mostly fine. Uh, you hear the door kick open, he's coming. Oh, he's horrifying. He's absolutely horrifying. But the thing is, the only real bad room that you can get is one room. Oh, absolutely, Arcady, absolutely. You guys do not know, Arcady is one of the spooky jump scare mansion runners. I believe they actually found the um, the skip for the specimen 12, the one I just did. But yes, the one that's an issue here is we have to worry about him in locked doors. If I get a locked door, I have to essentially be really quick, or he can instantly combo you. He's really one of the only specimens in the game that naturally can kill you. Like, immediately. Like, everyone else, you have a chance to run away, you'll have some time. Specimen 12 is really the only one. I think he'll do, like, three hits in, like, in one second and you'll die. He's like the Akuma death, like, thing. Like, you know the move where he, like, dives and then just immediately murder someone? It's kind of like that. So he's deadly. Oh yeah, that's actually a good point as well. The specimen isn't even the old man of the scythe. It's actually the the, ma the mansion. It's the building. It's weird. It would be a good idea. But most of the skip in this game is just the alt tabbing. So, you know, you just hit alt tab. Um, if you, I don't, I think this is actually really enough exclusive to Windows machines though on the downside. So you would have to have a Windows function. I don't know if it works on other platforms or other OSs. Because this works as I'm going to Task Manager or Sticky Keys. Also, we got lucky, so we're good. Yeah, we do have a nice Discord. Uh, I plugged that one earlier as well. It's good stuff and a very nice time. Alright, so we're actually doing really good. I bet you're wondering, oh my god, how is he on room 850? Alright, we're on 4, I think. So I should mention, yeah, epilepsy warning. We're back. Wait, what? There we go. Epilepsy warning is back. Can't see. It's very spooky. Okay, so... When I get to room 900, we'll be on the last 100. The, the game does actually end around 1,000. And we're going to have the dumbest glitch in existence coming up. Um, because we still have two specimens to deal with. Uh, both of them are going to have their gimmicks. I'm probably going to get slapped. No. Wow. Lucky me. Specimen, uh, I think four, 13 is the last one that's coming up. Uh, they're pretty easy to deal with for the most part. Are there even enemies in this game? There are. I've been hit several times and we're being chased by one right now. We avoid mo- Oh, wait. Hold on. Dead. See? One. 
How dare he jump scare me? Uh, we're able to avoid most of them by both good luck and fast movement. We're breezing past most of them. Uh, normally, this monster's pretty deadly, I should mention. They hit like a truck if they find you. Uh, but given that we're running so fast, they're not going to find me, which is the upside. However, I do kind of want them gone. Alright, thank god that wasn't locked. There we go. Like, this game is pretty amazing casually, and best part, it's literally free. This game causes... Actually, I guess this does fit for bargain bin. Where is the door? There it is. This game is actually straight up free, so it's... See? They had Grim Fandango and Bargain Bin to lead in the spooky games. We're going from spook... We're going from uh, cheap games to free. So, again, this game is literally free. Uh, the HD version is quite... Wait, where's the door? There it is. Neat. Alright, let's keep going. Either way, we kill them. But yeah, if you kill, I think, like, 30, you get the bad ending. And the next specimen's gonna be mildly annoying, is the most part I kind of put it. Also, you have more games. Do you know what Mall of the Spook is? It is just a mini-game where you, uh... You stab. See? You just stab. It's quite fun. Uh, you're essentially doing a dice roll in every single room. And it's kind of been equalized to a decent amount, but at the same time, the luck is still a factor. Like, you can definitely get sub one hour based on a variety of luck, but, you know. Yes, there was a Grim Fandango. And also, look, we got a high score. Alright, let's do, uh... Uh... Crit. Let's do, uh... Crypt speedruns. Yeah! Okay, we got this. Check it out. Spooky. Aww. We tried. We tried. I thought we had the high score. Apparently we did. The only Spooky got it somehow. Hey, we got the Howard room. So this is a rare room that you can get. How do you beat it? Talk this four or five times. Alt tab. There you go. It's done. Normally that room takes forever and you have to keep wandering. You can just talk to the door five times and alt tab and then you're done. Also, we don't have to worry about Specimen 4, because while they are showing up, we have three rooms to deal with them. As long as they don't kill me within three rooms, we're safe. And we are safe. Alright. Also, I'm really showing these off. There's a motivational poster. Hang in there. Sorry, everyone. Just hang in there. Alright, let's go. You see a one? Yeah, I killed one of those scary jump scare things. That was one of the horrifying face. I didn't kill an ice cream. I didn't kill a uh, cute ghost. I killed one of the horrifying one. What's a Howard? He's a guy that'll try to jump scare you. But we don't see him because we just instantly get out of the room. I always say, you're right, yeah, it's five. It's not four. I can keep forgetting it because of the area. Anyway, on to the amnesia room. It is specimen five. It's not in hole one. So, this is a reference to the game Amnesia, as you can tell by the lantern. It's actually a really easy series of rooms. Also, I hope I got to remember the code. I think it is... Uh, 3, 1... Oh god, I remember the code. I think it's... Wait, how did I think the code... 1... I think it was brute force it. Oh my god, I forgot the code. <laughs> Wait a minute, this is bad. Uh, is it four, one, four, two, three, one? No. I think it's, I know it's three, one, two, four. Four, one, three, two. That might be it. Hold on. I can't believe I forgot the code. I'm not gonna lie. Normally I write down the code. <laughs> Normally I write down the code. <laughs> Okay, this is why we have an estimate. For 10 minutes, me brute forcing a code. You see, now if I get world record, it's not my world record. It's our world record. That's the difference here. It's not my run here. It's our run. See? Alright, this is the amnesia monster. So their gimmick is that they will attack you from the water, and if you're on the boxes, you're safe. Um, you can essentially travel one whole sprint length, and you won't get slapped. However, I'm not actually able to regain stamina. 
So I have to be quite careful. Uh, I can do the alt tab for the beginning of each room, but I have to avoid the water. Thank you, chat, for giving me the code. Now it's, oh god, I'm on the box, I'm on the box. There we go. Hey, you guys see the mechanic here, how it generally works, it's quite nice. No, we're not resetting. <laughs> we'll be fine. See, it's all scripted, so we meet the estimate. We don't want to get too ahead of estimate. We have to be, you know, delightfully near the estimate, right? That, that's how it goes. I don't want to breeze through the estimate. That won't be right. Exactly. I'll put, I'll put chat at the end of the run. I think you'll actually just see a bunch of my own... Actually, I don't think you see the high score. I don't think they show anymore. Also, this monster can chase you for anywhere, I think about 10 to 15 rooms, like, minimum I think 10, but ideally you get normally about 15. And the whole gimmick is you can have a walk. You're essentially slowed down for however long they take. So you want them to leave earlier so we can get back to our fast-paced action, because these rooms all take a while. Uh, you'll know when we're done when you stop hearing the water sloshing, or however noise I'm splashing, that's the word, not sloshing. There we go, we're good. Exactly, it's an estimate. Roughly about then. Okay. So, in 70 rooms, we'll be seeing the final boss. And we're gonna have the dumbest solution ever made for the final boss. Also, I'm walking diagonally because this game has Doom-style movement. The next game will be Song of Horror, and we'll kind of get more into that once we're all nice and done. With chat help? Perfect. I'm glad. I'm glad. Now we have with chat help. See, chat, this is our speedrun, not just mine. It's our speedrun. <laughs> but yes, I'm moving diagonally. I essentially get the movement speed from going right and the movement speed from going forward. That's the way I kind of weigh it. What's a mercy kill? A mercy kill is what happens to me when I really mess up run like Haunting Ground, but that didn't happen, actually. Hey, I'm surprised. I didn't get Haunting Ground mercy killed. I only went five minutes over. <laughs> that hasn't mercy killed yet. We're all good. Mercy kill is also the name of another GDQ show, though. I think it's somebody's Sky Bills. They're great people. Here we go. All right, 50 rooms to go. We're gonna do like a New Year's Eve countdown when we get to the final 20. See, today we're all speedrunners. Although I do want to encourage you, even doing one to 250 is like a 15 minute speedrun. It's very quick. If you have like 15 minutes and want to try a game out, this game is free. This game is, again, if you like horror games, one to 250 doesn't have Ben. So you don't have to worry about the more horrifying enemy. Well, hold on, I'm killing this guy. Chop. You don't have to worry too much there, you know? It's nice and easy that way. Oh. Alright, we have Specimen 2. Greetings as well. Specimen 2 is a good way to end this run. That's really good. Alright. Uh, we're almost 30 left. We have the room for Five Nights at Freddy's, we don't have the monster. 30. Almost done with the game. By the way, I mentioned this earlier and I kind of hyped it up a little bit. We will literally be doing the dumbest strat I've ever seen in any game ever made. Uh, it'll probably make you laugh and you might be confused. Just understand when I explain it. Because this game actually does have a boss fight. And it's going to be kind of reminiscent of Legend of Zelda. Uh, you'll understand when we get there. But... 20. Okay, let's start counting them down. 20. 19. Almost done. 18. 17. 16. No, I didn't slow down not to share all the record. I got a lot of chasms. 15. Um, it's faster because you don't have to kill things. 14. That's just 12. 11. 10. 9. 8. Seven, six, five. Keep a little pep in your step. Also, there's a cool sign too. Now we're in cow feeders. Oh yeah. All right. Four, three, two, one. Also, uh, really quick, can I just get a check on how much of the estimates left? We are near the end now, so I just want to see if I can show up a cutscene or just let it go. We're about 106? But it's beautiful. See freedom. We have our freedom.
Ain't it nice? I think we're probably good to show this off. Cool. All right, that works. Oh no, it failed. Well, let's go. Bye, Spooky. Wait, where's the where's the door? There it is. Wait, what? Oh, there's the door. Okay, so now we're entering the final boss. We're done with the rooms. We're uh, in order to get our freedom. We're gonna have to fight. Yeah, we didn't even see Specimen Ten uh, again. That's never happened before. Never seen it. So we're gonna be fighting the final boss this time. World record's like a fifty-seven, I think, and that's actually done by me. Uh, what's gonna happen is <laughs> this is Specimen Nine, and the boss fight is. The game crashed. <laughs> I, I made a save right before we got there. I'm happy I did, by the way. I'm really happy I made that save. Oh, Lord. Uh, one moment. Let me uh, make sure we're good to go. <laughs> um, one moment. There we go. The game... Alright. Don't worry. We're fine. <laughs> We can see home cooked barbecue. I have a continue. The last few rooms are fast. Don't worry, we'll be really, we'll be really quick. Also, hold on. Don't worry, that doesn't even kill the run because this is done with RTA. Let's have to go through five rooms again. Is that a win then? I mean, technically it's a win. <laughs> technically it's a win. <laughs> Alright, so here's the actual trick that you do, by the way. You just hold it, and then you go through the door. Okay. Now we're back, and it's not going to crash. <laughs> oh no, we have chat help and a crash. Okay, so this time we don't crash the game. So this is going to be really stupid. But I found out because one time I was playing this game, my computer was really lagging for some reason, and I noticed I can get more hits in the normal. So what's going to happen is we're going to go through phase one, which is dodging these attacks, and there's going to be a phase right into the ball, and then he'll fall down. Uh, I'm gonna beat the ever-living life out of him when he comes down, and I'm gonna be doing something really unique, and you might not notice it, but I'll explain it once it happens. Just be ready. Okay, so kill this one, kill this one, and watch. He's gonna throw a ball at us, or an orb if you wanna call it that. I'm holding down the screenshot button and mashing attack by artificially inducing lag. I'm essentially going... <laughs> Like the One Punch Man, and that's gonna allow me to ever living beat the crap out of him until he dies. Time ends when the screen kind of fades away from the streets. I hope you've enjoyed Spooky so far. There's time! He's dead. 194. Hey, underestimate two at the game crash! Why did the game crash? Well, you die. And we'll enjoy our ending, and then we'll go on to the next run. Uh, before this ends, though, I just want to say I've been Ignisus. I'm also your host, so I'm not going anywhere. I'll be uh, joining for the next few runs. But as a runner, I've been Ignisus. You can find me on twitch.tv slash Ignisus, or at Twitter at uh, Ignisus underscore Twitch. I do a lot of spooky speed games. I do 95 ones, so it's fun. Uh, anyway. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Well, I'll show you the ending first just to kind of see what it is. And yes. How many screenshots do I take? I think it's only like 90. I have like a whole folder of screenshots. It wasn't scripted, I got lucky. <laughs> that is the difference. But the best part of the ending is this. Next up will be Song of Horror. That'll be done by Demonic Robots. I'll enjoy the song for a moment here. It's a nice song. But we'll be having Song of Horror Episodes 1 and 2, which is kind of like a revisit to games like Resident Evil and uh, Eternal Darkness. And that being said as well, I do just want to give a shout out to the Spooky Jumpscare Mansion community. We have a lot of fun people. We got a lot of good runners. We have a Discord. Uh, if you need help doing this one, it's quite nice. So it's really easy to get into. Again, 1 to 250 is literally a 15 minute speed run. Very easy. All you have to do is pull W and D together, and there's your, there's your speed. So. Anyway, 
yeah, I think we're uh, good to go to the next run. I do want to say once again, I hope you enjoyed it. We're going to get uh, ready to set up for uh, Song of Horror. So really quick though, we're probably going to be playing a brief ad or two between uh, just to keep the show going. Uh, if you would like to avoid that and help support GDQ during the off season, um, feel free to you know either sub or use a Prime sub here because it does help support the stream and it does help keep GDQ shows a going. Anyway, I'll be back on the hosting side of things, so... Yeah. Are back. It's nice to be back in my actual hosting spot here. But I think that last game was pretty spooky, if you ask me. I think it was a rather spooky game. I might say there's a lot of jump scares in it, too. Uh, again, that's a pretty fun game. I will not be running Devotion, but we'll have a lot of fun games come on up. Um, up next, we'll be having a Song of Horror, but before we begin with that, I just want to kind of talk about what that game is, and as well mention that we have a quick poll for you. Uh, Song of Horror is kind of like a Resident Evil meets Eternal Darkness inspired game. It's kind of reminiscent of that stuff, all very fun classical horror games, but you get a variety of characters to pick. So, that being said, you can vote right now in the uh, Twitch chat poll on which character you want to see. You have Sophie, Alina, uh, I think I'm going to butcher the name here. Etienne? And Alexander. I hope I didn't butcher the name. I think the monitor yeah, told me good. later <laughs> I did butcher the name. I did, I'm, I'm, cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I'm glad I got the name right. Apparently I got the name right. <laughs> but yes, I'm glad you all enjoyed the run. Uh, this is not pre-recorded, but chat is pre-recorded. So, we'll kind of be going to that in for... Um, we're going into that in one moment. I do also want to address one thing I said during the Spookies run. I didn't realize it, but I said One Punch Man. I meant Fist of the North Star. My friend messaged me immediately and told me I was a failure for that. I meant Fist of the North Star. I had a different thing in my brain right there. But yeah, Song of Horrors will be a really fun game. Uh, it's going to be pretty interesting in that tech. Uh, we're going to be going through two episodes. We're going to be going through, originally, I think, um, like the main... It's the Usher premise mansion. of the game's guy's house. It's a mansion. And we also have one of the characters' rooms and apartments. So it's very akin to the home theme that we have going on here. I think the poll is close to being done, but really quick, I just want to mention that the runner for us this coming up will be Demonic Robots. Recently, they actually did Dishonored 2 during GDQ. It was a pretty fun run, so I definitely enjoyed it for that one. All right, let's see who's winning so far. What do we have? It looks like... Alina will be the run. Anyway, let's go on over to Song of Horror, done by Demonic Robots, and see what they have to say about that. All right. Uh, hey there, everyone. I'm Demonic Robots, and welcome to Song of Horror. As Ag gave me in the intro, this is a... Um, a love letter to old school survival horror. Uh, there's so many Easter eggs and references that I'll try and point out during the run uh, if we have time. But it basically takes a lot of like what made old school horror really good and, and tries to make an ode to it. Um, I'm joined by Juho or Jew Horse, who's going to be helping me out with commentary on that. Um, we're going to be doing the first two episodes. So there's actually five episodes in this game. We're going to be doing the first two, which uh, as Egg Dicey's mentioned, it's going to be uh, the Husher Mansion, and then we're also going to be going to Farber and Sons Antique Shop and Apartments. Um, basically going to give a quick little warning, though, at the start here, and I'll make sure I'll do a reminder later on. Um, the ending is a little bit sensitive. It does have a theme of suicide in it, so if that imagery makes you uncomfortable, don't worry. Feel free to click out near the end. I'll give a, a warning. We're not going to see anything up until that until then, and I'll make sure to tell you guys. But... A little cool thing I want to kind of show off is all the difficulties are actually named after a bunch of famous horror writers. So there's E.T.A. Hoffman, M.R. James, Edgar Allan Poe, and H.P. Lovecraft. We're going to be playing on E.T.A. Hoffman. However, there is a category for H.P. Lovecraft. So if you're feeling a little daring, then uh, make sure to check that out. And we're going to be starting here at the prelude, a Friday like any other. And Countdown is going to start in three, two, one, go. So, this is a Cthulhu-esque story following a man named Daniel Neuer, who is a ex-alcoholic who works for Wake Publishing, which is actually a reference to Alan Week. Wake, one like Alan's sleep, am I right? <laughs> um, hey, wait a minute, that's my joke. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I, I, I came up with that very original joke on my own. But um, he works for Wake Publishing, and there is a man named Husher who... Uh, we have to go to his house because he's not responding to Etienne, who works at the publishing firm, and they need his book now, okay? They can't, you know, they gotta get it on the presses. 
So this is a little intro. This kind of shows you lifestyle. And one thing that you'll see a lot with this is that there are a lot of like really detailed backgrounds and items and environments pretty much throughout the entire game, which is really cool. Um, this is fixed camera angles game. However, it's alternate controls. Um, not like so it's not tank controls. You know, he can turn on a dime pretty well. It's not like uh, if you move forward, then you're gonna be moving forward no matter what on the up stick. Kind of like a Sol Sol Hill esque kind of like movement, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, like exactly. Resident Evil kind of movement. Yep. So the cool thing about this game is that all of the episodes are actually kind of themed off of other games. So episode one here takes a lot of inspiration from Resident Evil and Alone in the Dark, and then then episode two takes a lot of inspiration from Silent Hill. Uh, episode three, I believe, is obscure. Episode 4 is Amnesia, and I can't quite remember what Episode 5 is, but that one takes place in an asylum. So if you know any asylum games, it might be based off that. So this is the prelude. This is kind of just an intro. Nothing bad or spooky is going to be happening too much here in this area. You know, it's daytime. Daytime in horror games is usually a good thing. Yeah. But here we go. Uh, We're ba gonna go basically, he's just going to like look around the house trying to investigate about... like. I think it's like a missing person or something like that. If I'm not mistaken. Missing family, yeah. Yeah. Um, keep in mind, I only speedrun the first episode, not the second episode. <laughs> and uh, I barely know a little bit of the, of the game since I, I stopped that episode too, but I do know the speedrun on episode one because I did speedrun on episode one. Yes. So Daniel is coming into Husher's office and he does the classic, what the? That every single horror game protagonist likes to say at least once. What and um, you're probably wondering, hell? wait a minute, this is Daniel. He wasn't on the poll. Well, that's actually because in the prelude, you play as Daniel. But for the rest of the episodes, you actually get the options of playing as other characters. So that is who you guys voted for. You voted for Alina, who is probably one of the worst employees you've ever seen. Um, you know, and, and that's kind of a common theme with a lot of these characters is they're just like very casual about their breaking and entering. They just kind of, you know, jump right into it. But the theme of the game is if you die as a character, so like let's say we die as Alina, you can still continue on. You don't go to a checkpoint, really. You, you can still continue. However, that character is dead permanently, and that affects things later on. So we chose Alina. Uh, she is a technician. You could have chosen Alexander, who works for the Hushers. Etienne, who's the man I mentioned earlier, works at Wake Publishing. Or Sophie, who is uh, Daniel's ex-wife. We're going to be going with Alina. Um, the difference is stats, which are very minor. Um, and they also each have personal items, which add a little bit of help to it. So Alina's If I'm not is mistaken, is, yeah, Alina is like the fastest uh, character in the game. So um, that actually answers one of my questions. But if I ask, so who, out of the four, who's your favorite? Oh. Um, out of these four, I really like Sophie. I think my favorite playable character, though, is Grace, who is a college student in episode three. But Alina's pretty good, too. Um, so she's coming here to investigate the power is out and we need to go fix the power and she's a very dedicated employee so dedicated she'll break the law um another another thing about these characters is they all have their own personal items um hers is a radio and and Ank is very familiar with radios and, and what's going on with them so that's true when we're about to be attacked by an enemy it'll actually start buzzing static but the first thing that we're going to be doing here is we're going to be collecting some items. This is a very big collect-a-thon in between all the puzzles and the spooky Cthulhu-esque monsters. So we're grabbing a lot of these items that we actually won't use until later on. Um, and here we go. So this is the first thing. You actually can listen at doors. So occasionally the game will spawn enemies behind these doors. I gotta listen here. Alright, so far 100% never get anything there. I would be shocked if we heard anything. But... Some rooms are static, whereas they will always have some kind of monster behind them. And if you open that door, you immediately die. Like, you get sucked in, and, and that's the end of your character. I'm there very are a careful. few uh, stuff that is going to happen in the, in the game, which is like, uh, if you open up a door, and right behind the door, there's like darkness or something like that, they, uh, it will kill you, and then it will like you have to replace another character from it. That's how this game is like. Yeah. There is going to be another uh, mechanic later on during episode two, but we're not going to talk about it until we go to episode two. Right. So it's just to make sure that, you know, we don't die. We're going to be listening at some doors if I know that a presence spawns. 
Um, there are, by the way, the cool thing about this game as well is there are random scare events. And some of these are very simple. This one static happens every time. However, some of them are a light will flick off or some of them will be as big as, you know, a ghost will spawn behind you. So I categorize them in two ways. There are the player reaction scares, which are trying to um, elicit a reaction out of you or the viewer. And then there are character reaction scares, where your character will actually get scared themselves. We want player reaction scares because then that won't affect our movement. If we get character ones, then that will affect our movement because our character will stop and go, Oh man, that was, that was spooky. <laughs> um, so here's the first main gimmick of the game, you know, just a normal door. Nothing too special about it. We saw plenty yeah. of doors in, in, in X uh, Spooky's run. Um, unfortunately, we don't want to go through this one because um, it's doing that. So. Ooh, spooky! Yeah. Well, we didn't have spooky doors, yeah. This is very spooky, all right? All right, so he's gonna just hold onto the door and just like push and block yep. um, at the door right now. This is one of the mechanics that will kill you if you kind of uh, play through this game. Um, yes. Very random. So that is called the door. It can spawn behind any doors. If we opened up that door right now, we would die. But if we open up this door, we're okay. But gotta be careful because there are a uh, a lot of those. And they can spawn completely randomly at any time. Sometimes during runs, I won't get any. Sometimes during runs, I'll get three or four per episode. It really is just completely random. Yep. Um, it's one of the reasons we play on the lower difficulties though. It does make it less likely to happen, but it still can happen. But yeah, no, totally, totally fine door. But you know, Again, doing a little bit more breaking and entering, you know, Alina is just trying to, uh, to, just to fix the electricity, you know, that's all she's trying to do. Why does she need to go into the garage? Well, um, she's not a very good employee. Um, you think that an electrician would maybe, I don't know, bring some fuses if she's going to, you know, fix a fuse box. Not gonna but lie, said, she, she looks more like a mechanic more than an electrician, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. I have to ask though, have you, have you seen an electrician? I, I, mm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, have you seen one? I mean, it just this looks is like a mechanic, to be honest. Mechanics do deal with electricity, yes. Okay, fine. <laughs> they can. But to be fair, usually most electricians and mechanics don't go into the uh, client's garage wrong. to steal their yeah. fuses to use them. Well, you're not wrong, yes. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> So now we are heading into the basement and nope. with, if I can remember to use the master key or no, we're not heading into the basement just yet. We got to do something else that I forgot to do. So this game can be a little bit confusing. You have to go um, upstairs through the, the, the corridor if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, no, we got that. Um, we need to actually oh, really? uh, wipe up a mess. So you guys oh, yeah. know that, that again, Alina is an electrician. Um, electricity and water doesn't go very well together. So we're actually going to head back into the kitchen because we have a live current going through a puddle of water. But it's okay. Alina's an electrician. So she's just going to wipe that up with her cloth. And I like not how you just stand on the puddle, just like not getting harmed or anything. Yeah, she's fine. Doesn't need to worry about it whatsoever. I, ha I have to ask a hypothetical question here. She broke into the house, which is bad, but she cleaned up an electrical spill, which is good. Does that even out? I mean, I, I think it does. She's probably the nicest burglar ever. I mean, she is taking a lot of their stuff, but she's using it to fix up their house. It's kind of like when you have your parents come over and they just start like fiddling with stuff and like fixing things. And you're just like, come on, please. You don't need to do that. It's fine. Ooh. It's same energy. But now we are going to the basement because we, we don't like this spooky environment. You know, a lot of this stuff is very scary. It's very spooky. The scares are random. We just hear a random child crying at the background. You know, spooky stuff like that. But that's a really cool thing is there's a lot of audio scares and visual scares. And sometimes you you won't even like see them for a long time. Like I have about a hundred hours in this game and there are still some scares that I haven't seen. But like, you know, like that red closet, you know, there can be a hand in it and it makes a grudge reference. All that fun stuff. So here's the first puzzle. These puzzles are actually really difficult um when you're doing them the first time and they can even be kind of difficult if you don't remember the order of them so yeah. don't it's be ashamed a, to use the guide puzzle. I did. it's just a math puzzle yeah horrible the good thing is at least a lot of these puzzles all have the same static answer so we're gonna do four seven nine eight and that's gonna open this up and we're gonna find a doll so we need five dolls to complete this level that's gonna be the first one the green doll that's my favorite very cool doll 
But now that we yeah, have those, electricity those through dolls, the house... Yeah, those dolls are gonna be used for a puzzle, like a dollhouse kind of puzzle, so... Yep. Yeah. Alright. So here we have, like, one of the two only quote-unquote skips in the game. It's a really terrible one, but it works. So we're gonna press on this boiler to reset it. And now we can open the garage door. We're going to come over here, use the remote control. And then if we examine that, we skip the cutscene. So we don't have to wait and watch the garage door open up first. We can just start running immediately to get the battery clamps. Yeah, it skips about like a few I like seconds. That one. Yeah. So she's like warps? Uh, yeah. yeah. And along with that, usually during the cutscene, while the garage door is opening, you just have to stand still and wait for it to finish. Oh, oh, hey, hey. Oh, that's a, that's a jump scare. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was Catherine. She's the owner of the house. You know, she's just giving us a hey, good job on fixing the electricity. Because we came here to do our job, but we have to investigate more. Congratulations. <laughs> Fix something. Yep. All right, so we're getting another doll here. I'm not going to accidentally open that door. I've done that yeah. before, and it's an immediate death trap. You have to yeah. go so over like to the I light said, first. There uh, there are mechanics in this game that will kill you. One of them is called darkness. Uh -huh. So uh, basically, if you don't turn on the lights and you just go into the door immediately, you just die in there. And it's horrible. Yeah. Is there anything in the game that doesn't immediately kill you? Um, <laughs> I no, you're, you're so. pretty much dead. It, yeah. It's very Cthulhu-esque. It's either you're alive until yeah. you're not. It's, oh, like I oh said, God. It's, <laughs> All right, so this is the introduction to the next mini game, which is called The Darkness, where you actually have to go hide. It's kind of like Clock Tower, but without someone chasing you. So we're going to come over here, going to get into this closet. Also, a good time to point out, if you're a Dead Space fan, look at Alina's cap. She works for Monolith Security. You're going to recognize the logo on it. So this is very much just kind of press the triggers to the beat of the heart, and you probably won't die. And we're all okay. But yeah, so her hat is a Dead Space reference. And you can find those absolutely everywhere. Um, we picked up uh, Matchbox earlier. Yeah, I can show it. Uh, whoops. Uh, examine. Type 90 matches. Uh, and Dicey's, you probably recognize where that's from. Fatal Frame. Yeah. So you can find those literally everywhere. But now there's um, some RE7 black mold on there. Um, fortunately for Alina, it's actually going to be a lot easier for her to get rid of her mold problem than it is for uh, the Baker family. Also gonna grab some real tongs. Just, yeah, just gonna use the uh, the wires just to attach a um, battery to the light huh? right beside yeah. her, and then yeah, just shine the light. Easy. I, I don't know if that's how mold works. No, 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 no. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, it, it, it works in this game, so don't worry about it. <laughs> See, look, it's okay. It also magically unlocks the door as well. Huh. Yeah. I guess all you need to do is hire an electrician and then you're all fine. I, I Sorry, you need an electrician to break into your house and then you're all fine. <laughs> exactly. It's okay. So we're going to head into here. This is where the Husher's children um, usually sleep. Um, they get their own like private little hallway and bathroom. This would be nice as a kid. But um, we're going to come into Julia's room because we need to get her uh, super glue. I don't know why she's been hanging out with instant glue. Uh, but we're going to grab oh, that. No. And then we're going to head into the bathroom and, and, you know, she's not only an electrician, she also works as a plumber. Again, not a very good plumber, but a, a plumber nonetheless. Because yes. uh, we need to grab something out of this toilet and we're going to use the grill tongs to do so. There we go. So we grabbed another doll, the black doll. This one's a little bit different, a little bit more spooky than the others. And then we are going to be heading over to the left. So now we're going to be going to the attic. Um, I did mention how there are random events and they are completely random. However, there's usually times where it's like you're probably gonna get something. So we might encounter a minigame monster. Nope, we just got a radio yelling at us. That's actually good because that means that we are not um, gonna be attacked by anything for a little while, at least. We got some more time. So, so now we're gonna grab this metal hook and we're heading uh, up to the attic. And uh, guess what? There's an instant death trap up there too. That's a good good answer, but not quite the question I wanted to ask, but that does relate also, back to the... this is kind of something that, bug, that bugs you. me just a little bit. For some reason, this cutscene coming up, it says oh, it's skippable. Oh, I forgot I was muted. Yeah, it's okay. 
Uh, uh, I had a question really quick. I forgot I was muted. I asked the question. I was like, wait oh, a minute. Okay. You didn't hear me. <laughs> yeah. Um, what made you want to run this game? Um, I actually really liked it casually. Um, it, it's kind of a very good beginner, I guess, survival horror speed run. And this was about the time when I was just getting started into speed running seriously. Um, because, you know, it's not super difficult. And oh, it's believe really it or not, as like, well. Yeah, believe it or not, Demonic actually asked me to run this game as well. And I only ran an episode one, and that's it. Yeah. It's yeah. a very simple run, but it's nice. Yeah, he, was you know, you so in, he was so into uh, Song of Horror that he was like, yo, uh, he was waiting for like uh, episodes to come out. And then he was like asking me, yo, you want to uh, like speed run this game? I was like, um. <laughs> and I, I I've been did plugging this game to one. everyone. Yeah. I've been telling everyone to run it. It's still an alright game. And also, oh god. Oh. So th that can actually, we need to go through this hallway three times, and usually you do get that. It's better when we're coming back through the hallway, because if you do it then, what ends up happening is you uh, don't have to, like, turn back around to face it. But unfortunately, we got the bad luck, which is okay. But now we are going to be heading outside again. We need to go through the service entrance, probably where we should have gone through in the first place. But again, it's fine. Um, but if you remember Alexander from the poll, um, his wife actually and him worked for the Hushers. However, his wife is missing too. We don't know where she went. Um, it's a, it's a horror game with Cthulhu monsters. You guys can guess what probably happened. But we do need to grab a couple of things from their area in the bedroom that they lived in. My guess is instant death. Baby. Uh, you are half right. Maybe. There, there was death. It wasn't instant per se. Oh. Well, given the core theme of this game being instant death, I kind of well, kind of I guess, assumed, I guess, anyway, I guess it, it, where do you consider death? Like, 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 uh, is it, that's a that's a question that you need to answer. Because if so, yes, it was instant death. If not, uh, I feel like that's more of a philosophical question than horror game speedrunning has to answer. <laughs> I mean, would you say that coming back as an evil spirit would be counting as death? That's tormented by the presence? Maybe. It, it, it's a hard question. See, I'll let you I don't, I'm, not a, <laughs> I'm not a philosopher. Maybe someone in chat might be. I'm going to see some answers, and if there's any fun ones, I'll read them back to you. Awesome. But here we go. So now we have all of the dolls. We're going to be doing a quick puzzle up here. Um, and that's going to spawn some spooky stuff in, in this area. You know, nobody really likes spooky things. Well, that's a lie. But nobody likes being in a situation like this where they would be there in real life. But we can handle it, chat. I believe in all of you. Hmm. We're going to come time. into here. Yes. Into the playroom, which I want to mention. It would be so cool to have a room dedicated to just toys as a kid. Whoops, that's the wrong spot. And there we go. So we put all the dolls in the correct position, and that's going to give us the old key. It's also going to spawn something. Um, so if you notice that we put all those dolls in the right spot, well, those actually might, you know, have an effect on this house because it was kind of a replica of this house. So let's go take a look back in the master bedroom. It is also worth mentioning that Husher, the author, is not actually here technically. Um, he left on a journey. We don't know where. And he left behind his family, his wife and two kids and their housekeeper. And oh, God. Oh. So, now I get to find a bunch of wicker dolls. Uh, dolls made out of wood who leave a hint as to how to cleanse this house from the presence. The reason we actually go to that one first is because it has the quickest scare. So when she walked in there, she looked over, she went, oh, that's actually faster because if we go to any of the other ones when they enter, it actually has her scream and like flail back which is terrifying, and it also costs you a whole second. And we need to go there anyway, so it just works out in the end. Now we need to grab all of the notes from these dolls. Just to make sure that, you know, we know what to do next. Technically, I already do know what to do next, but because Alina doesn't have that knowledge, we don't have that knowledge. And also, radio. What's going on with that radio? <laughs> Don't give, so. us a, don't give us a Silent Hill reference. <laughs> no. I think I'm going to Phasmophobia right there. <laughs> oh, that would be a good one, too. I mean, this did come out after Phasmophobia, so we clearly know that they stole it from this game. Obviously. Clearly. <laughs> uh. 
Although I, I hope Alina's making a lot more than the people in Phasmophobia make. Because those guys make like, get, you know, $10 per voting. That is true. Although she is breaking into a person's house. That is true. And yes, um, if we would like to get the second poll up for the next characters. Uh oh. Oh. All right. No. You have to go the other <laughs> way then. Oh, let's see. But we are good to go. So this is so the really darkest uh, one. Uh, why are you doing the darkness? I'm sorry, we have a poll. The next characters we have are apparently going to be Eric, Daniel, Sophie, Etienne, and Renee. So, like I said, basically, or, or some, these yeah, kind of man. scares right now is just RNG. You can get, like, any one of those scares, like Darkness, or even, like, this one as well. This is just one of the RNG ones. Got, like, really bad on it. <laughs> and we're good. So, if you mess that up, bad things happen. Also... Nice. If you guys like teeth, uh, none of the characters in this game have good teeth. It's probably the most uh, realistic game because everyone's teeth are just messed up and janky. Here we go. I, I feel like an electrician should be able to have a dental plan, though. Dude, every character is bad, even the rich pe uh, characters. I don't know what it is. Oh. It was Europe. It was the late 90s. Oh. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. <laughs> the 90s were a different time. We'll just go with that logic. Yep, that's about right. So, coming over here, we are going to come back, and what we learned from those notes, if we read them, um, is that the black doll is is kind of the cause of a lot of these problems. So all we got to do is burn the black doll. And thankfully, we've been getting a lot of supplies. I haven't been really pointing them out, but pretty much a lot of the items that we picked up are for this, because you need a lot to uh, burn this doll, apparently, and start a fire in the fireplace. So, we grabbed a couple of things we're going to bring over here. So we got the firewood. It would not be silly to try that on a fireplace. There we go. For some reason, the item looking thing is actually controlled by where the flashlight placement is. You have to like angle it down. Here we go. We I still wonder why can't you just combine all those? Yeah, it would make this a little bit yeah. easier. I think it's because like the game wants you to like go over and put the firewood in and then come back later on and then put the solvent in. So I mean, really quick, I got two things. Uh, one, Sophie won the poll with 27 votes. Awesome. Two, and this is just a general sentiment of the past, uh, I think minute of both chat and dialogue to an extent. Uh, this is just a general PSA. Everyone, make sure you brush your teeth. It's healthy. <laughs> it keeps them fresh. Yeah. I've been seeing a lot of people talk about brushing their teeth, so make sure you do that. It's very good. I, I don't know why, uh... Of all the GDQ shows, this is the one to give this PSA, but brush your teeth, everyone. It's a shame you didn't get uh, teeth in the Spookies menu. It would have been perfect fitting for this. That is true. There is the teeth menu in that game. Yeah. Also, we got some Doctor Who stuff right here of a building being here despite not physically working with the rest of the house. Um, this is actually a new spot. Um, yeah. Originally, you just had that small hallway, but you get that little area, though, when they released episode four. But there we go. That is episode one. We find Daniel, who we saw in the prelude, who's been there for a couple days. He's not doing too well. But thankfully, Alina was able to save him from that. And yeah, he's not dead. So that's the good thing. So he actually was going to be playable. and uh, We didn't get him in chat. Um, but pretty much the entire game is about saving him. And let me just say, he has to have some very good friends for what they go through. Also, we get a bit of a jump scare here. This is a character that isn't actually Catherine Husher. It was originally thought it was. However, it is not. You're going to have to uh, play the game to find out who that is. Now we are going on to episode two. Which is called Eerily Quiet. We get to see that lovely cutscene again. I don't know why they make us watch it twice and you can't skip it. But um, in case you missed it, don't worry, guys. I, I got you. Skippable cutscenes. We got another jump scare again. Well, if we have an unskippable cutscene, uh, there's one more PSA reading from chat. <laughs> Remember to floss too. <laughs> yes. If you don't floss, I was about to say that. I was like, important. Remember to brush your teeth and floss at the same time. Well, why didn't you add it, Juo? You know hey, what flossing. It's chat's PSA. <laughs> oh, there we go. Remember to floss. Yep. Daniel. Floss as in, you know, the hygiene thing, not not the Fortnite dance. And that, floss that dance. That is correct, and floss yes. dance. No, we, we, we're talking about floss dancing. All right, well, here you, we go. You do need to pick Sophia, right? Yes. 
Yeah, yeah. we have a uh, oh Sophie, Sophie. Sorry, Sophie. So after that, Daniel learns that Husher um, had control of a music box, and he got the music box from a man named Isaac Farber. Um, Isaac Farber, who is the dad of another character that you could play as, um, owns this antique shop where he got it from a auction sale uh, from a specific house. So that's where he found the music box. You actually see it in the very opening cutscene of the game that we skipped. Uh, it has For My Little Ariadne on it. Um, but yeah, so this is Sophie. Um, her personal item is scented candles. You know, she really likes to support Febreze. That's kind of her main thing. Um, I don't know it has much of an effect, but technically it's supposed to be if you walk into it, your character is calmer, which I think makes it so you're less likely to get jump scares. We're not going to really use them, though, because they actually take quite a bit of time to put down. But here we go. So remember, this episode, the first episode theme was Alone in the Dark slash Resident Evil. This episode's theme is Silent Hill. So it draws a lot of inspiration from that, um, including one very big one that involves rooms that we'll check out later on, if uh, Agdices could remind me. I would say oh, in no. about like 10 uh, minutes. I'm not sh 10 minutes? All right, I'll keep an eye on that. Right now, uh, let me see how many timers that. Cool. All right, I'll get, tell you about 10 minutes. Awesome. Also, there's um, adding another point. We were originally going to have actually the room on the show, um, but I'll be making a debut at a later show. I'm not sure which one yet, but I was going to be having that to match. Mm -hmm. But due to unforeseen circumstances, uh, it's going to be just delayed by a little bit. Yeah, I hope the runner um, stays well, though. It should be all good. I, I, they're very good people. So. Everything looks abandoned. All right, so rain. Yes, we get some rain. So in these outdoors areas and in Erica's apartment later on, um, these are actually safe areas. We can still get jump scares, but we're never going to get attacked here. Um, there is the part where a mannequin can fall into that dumpster. Um, it's completely random. I, I rarely have it happen, but I feel like it would happen at a GDQ event. So there are some very spooky scares, and a lot of them are really subtle good ones. They're not usually super loud. It's just like, hey, there's a ghost behind you that you probably didn't realize until you look back at the footage. But um, there there are uh, uh, clips of me panicking because I get jump scares during the speed runs just because they're things that I've never seen. Like that, we get that little door. So the gimmick of that, so with the rest of the game, you have all these doors you can actually listen through to avoid sound traps. With that door specifically, when we are getting to it, we can't listen to it. Um, it it's too reinforced, so we need to go look at a monitor that's on the table. It doesn't really play into it that much if you know what to do, but if you're, you know, your casual playthrough, you're probably not going to know that. But here we go, we got our very first Silent Hill reference. Um, and that is going to be a magnet from Toluca Lake. You know, yes. very, very pretty establishment. Definitely some way place that I would recommend visiting if you don't have any issues with, uh, you know, suffocating your wife or have a little girl who's a uh, evil monster. You know, as long as you don't have that, you're good to go. It's a great place. Also, if you don't live in a cursed apartment, I'd recommend having that as a backup as well. I just remember, there's like a Zoltair machine back there. Yes, yep. <laughs> the, there is a Zoltair machine. Um, every episode has like this, you know, uh, collectible that can act as a personal item um, that you have to collect things for. So this one is with the Zoltair machine and the coins, which gives you fortunes. And the first one, it's an archive of haikus. But before we... I like how in addition to... Uh... Like, you know, Silent Hill, Resident Evil, and other horror references, they decided to reference the, the 80s Tom Hanks movie, Big. <laughs> it's great. Uh, but what's not so great is that. So that is the next monster in the next gimmick, The Silence. So Right now, yeah. Right now, there's the gimmick right here. Uh, he has to hold the breath right now. Um, using, uh, using this uh, buffer. Mm-hmm. The trigger buttons, yeah, gonna move uh, with the circle as well. There is like an outer, uh, that's like an inner circle, so he has to like make it as small and big, uh, but he has to follow the circle as well. So yeah, and for whatever it's a pretty reason, pretty cool gi gimmick. Yeah, people find this to be so, really difficult, by the way. <laughs> it's kind of like we fit. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I actually thought I had to go out of the circle when I played this game. When I played this episode, I was like going out of the circle, then going back in. I, I, I died, fortunately. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I didn't know about this one. It happens a lot. I'm gonna try and uh, mm -hmm. point out another Easter egg here. Um, if I can find it. I don't remember exactly where it is, but it should be on one of these mailboxes. So we are in some apartments. Apartments are a big theme in Silent Hill games. And I want to see if I can find it. So they have all these names on it. I don't know if these are like developers or people who want to context or maybe the Kickstarter backers. Um, this is actually to give you a hint as to where the answer to a puzzle solution is. But I'm not seeing it on this one, so it might be on the other ones. Um, there's, oh yeah, there's uh, Ellen and Amanda Ripley, L and R. So that's another one, so an alien reference. And then I think it's on these ones over here. If not, I'll just uh, move on and explain it. But I kind of want to show it just to see if I can find it. Uh, doo -doo -doo. No worries. No worries. Yeah. And this was in my uh, estimate planning. <laughs> there it is. Heather Mason. So we get a little Silent Hill hey. 3 reference there. I think that was worth it. I think it was nice. Absolutely. It's pleasant. Then we need to reach those keys. We're going to use the hanger that we found along with the magnet from the back of the Toluca Lake fridge magnet to get the keys. So, you know, a little bit of MacGyvering to get through this as well. Um, and now we are in the bank area. And you actually learned that this apartment is ran by a landlord named Walter Sullivan, who isn't a very good guy. But there's, an, there's another little Silent Hill reference that's, for you. That's a lot of Silent Hill references in this episode. Hey, I promised that there that were going to be Silent that. Hill references. I let you know. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did promise that. Yeah. Yep. I didn't realize there would be that many. Huh. Never even realized this, did you? Act on your playthrough. Oh. I did not. I saw the beat like the rest of the game. <laughs> uh, that being said, uh, I guess going on to another thing, since we are doing a bit of a partial category here, chapters one and two. What is the whole one to five kind of like? So the long. whole one to five is, is, it's definitely a long speed run. Um, a lot of the levels play out like this, where it's a lot of memorization of the puzzle answers, good menuing, and good RNG when you get the uh, enemy encounters. Some of the encounters, such as the door, are usually a little bit better than ones such as the darkness, because you don't have to go as far out of your way. Um, however, a lot of them can be pretty difficult, especially with the characters that we play as. So... The characters that we play as are usually on this episode is Erica, who is the fastest character in the entire game out of all the playable characters. However, she's also the weakest when it comes to the door. So even if you're playing on the easiest difficulty, it's really easy to lose a run to the door presence because you'll just get eaten alive and turned into a, uh, a Cthulhu Sunday. But it's still really cool, uh, really good like puzzle walking or like, you know, puzzles. Like that's the best part about this game. Uh, nice menuing and all that good stuff. Like right here, we got to do the wrench. And here's a way that you can lose your run. That's a really stupid way is you need that wrench later on. So don't use the wrench and then forget to pick it up. <laughs> right now, we're going to come over here to this uh, little TV stand. We're going to use that crank and that's going to unlock the door. And then we're gonna look at the monitor, and we get a little bit of a uh, of some spooks. Oh, he just just chilling there. Just chilling, you know, having a good time, enjoying himself in the gallery room. So much like a wild guess. If you open this room early, you die. You are one hundred percent correct. Yep. For this first one. Usually, um, it's for the first one. For the second ones, if you walk in there and you don't check it, and he's in there, um, you get the silence mini game, which is slow. Oh, we got whispers. So I think we should be okay. So the whispers means that it spawned the presence randomly in one of the rooms. Um, we'll now get the door prompts. Okay, we're good. We'll now get the door prompts, which will be like, hey, there's something maybe behind here. Even on doors that you've already gone through, which shouldn't be the case. So hopefully this isn't a problem. All right, we're not dead. Funny enough, funny enough I've never seen this on my playthrough. Yep. This is the first time I'm seeing oh, this. Are you saying? Are you telling me? Are you about to say it? Never seen uh, this before. Never. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Has this happened before? Oh, that never there. No, it's never happened before. Also, there is a little it reference. It always happens, man. Yeah, yep. there's a lore reference there. You can't see it, but sometimes that painting will be gone, and uh, and there's a hole there. So hmm. there was a hole there, but it's gone now. 
That reminds me, I think it has been a little under 10 minutes, but I think you wanted to check out one reference to something. Yes, we will check that out pretty soon. Thank you for reminding me so I do not forget. Oh, uh -huh. oops, I need to use the key. No problem. So right now we are going to Isaac Farber's house or his apartment. Uh, that was his business. However, we need to talk to him. So we're going to go to his apartment. So we're going to be making our way up this way. Right there. All right. And then we got to use the copper key to get through. So this is actually kind of a dangerous area. For some reason, you get a lot of chances of bad things happening here. I don't know why. His his place is pretty cursed. And here we go. We're going to grab this UV light. Um, I think you're supposed to unplug it, but I've never had anything bad happen. I think it makes it more likely to get attacked. However, I haven't had that happen. Oh, no. We got the exit door. All right. Oh. So that is another random scare. Um, and it's also why we get the UV light first. Um, that exit door will not let us go through until we go through a bunch of doors a few times. But uh, really quick, I'm going to concentrate huh. on this puzzle because this puzzle sucks. So I got to look at the solution. Sounds good. So, Drew, while Demonic is concentrating, when are you going to run episode two? It sounds oh, like you did no. one. When does two arrive? When I when I, when I I feel like I want to play this game. <laughs> so tomorrow. <laughs> no, it's not tomorrow. <laughs> That puzzle is terrible, by the way, because not only is it really difficult, but it's also like not easy to look up a guide for to know how to do it. Because if you change like one of those things, it completely ruins the code. So right now we can't actually leave. There is a painting there that will not allow us to do so. So we are just going to uh, kind of walk back and forth between these rooms until it disappears. So, you know, really getting the room action here in, uh, in today's game. It's kind of a... Uh... A massive prank. Hey, man, replace your door with a painting. <laughs> it's, it's exactly that. Cthulhu is just a YouTube prankster in disguise as a primordial evil being. You have to understand, the actual, uh, they always say if you see Cthulhu, it drives a person mad, but it's actually just a spookier form of Ashton Kutcher telling you he got punk. <laughs> All right, so now we are actually in a pretty safe area. Um, we're actually not going to be attacked for a little while. We are going to head over to Erica's apartment. And also there's a cute little uh, Cthulhu chibi on her keychain, which I would love if they like made that in real life and sold it. I think that would be fantastic. But they haven't done that yet. And while you are going through, I actually do have another question because it was brought up earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, what is Sophie's special item? Like, what, what can she do? She has the Febreze scented candles. So she has three candles that she can place down in rooms and it makes her calmer, which I believe makes it so you're less likely to get attacked by enemies in those areas. There? But I think oh, that's about it. And every single character has their own uh, that they do. The game doesn't really say it exactly for a lot of them, but some of them are a little bit more obvious than others. Like Grace from episode three has caffeine tablets that make you, uh, give you more speed. Um, Omar has his glasses, who he can't be seen without his glasses. And that lets him um, examine items and immediately find what like is about them. Um, also, so we are searching through Erica's dirty laundry um, because we are looking for a specific key. I promise er uh, Sophie isn't doing this just for fun. Um, there's four piles. It'll never be in the first two. It's always in three or four. Three is better RNG for us because we check it, but four is technically faster. It's kind of a coin flip. Um, if you lose the coin flip, you lose more time than if you just double check and, get, and win the coin flip. So we're going to double check and hopefully we'll get it here. But yeah, it's kind of funny because if you play as Erica, they like all these characters are kind of disgusted just going through her piles of clothing. And then you play as Erica and you think, oh, it's, you know, her own clothes, but she's just as grossed out by it. And I'm like, I, I definitely vibe I with mean, this. I mean, I too can be ashamed of the way I live sometimes. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't just pile up their clothes in a corner and just, you know, scoop it up and put it in laundry? You don't need a laundry basket. <laughs> but there we go. Got some more posters up there, like Rose Labyrinth. She actually has a really cool apartment. Again, the environment details are really nice. Like you can spend hours just kind of looking at every single little thing there is in this game. And it's really cool to see how much like details that they put into this game. This was a love letter. Wait, 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 wait. Mm -hmm. You said these are these are Erica's clothes and Erica's apartment? Yes. Why does she have a pile of clothes next to the toilet? 
I don't know. Erica I mean, isn't the tidiest. She could be person. showering, man. It's she also has them in the, the kitchen too. You put your clothes next to the toilet. I mean, she also puts them in the kitchen too. It, I, I don't know. God knows why. The kitchen, at least, you know, maybe you take your shirt off or you're grilling bacon or something. Get those nice burns, <laughs> like. I guess so. The toilet, though. I'm so confused. She also left the house for like a straight up month. So those were like sitting there fermenting. And I don't know much you guys, but I at least like clean my apartment before I go on any extended vacation. Mm. <laughs> hey, I'm not here to judge Erica, okay? She's she's already having a bad enough time it is getting attacked by Cthulhu monsters. And here we go. We're going to check out these wardrobes. And we actually can see it's Walter Sullivan, security, agent number 09534. And funny enough, if you look at the picture of him, he looks more like Eddie than anybody. <laughs> oh. He has the backwards hat and all. It's the style. It's a very good style. But now we are going to be heading to something special. Um, I'm going to give you guys a bit of a hint. Um, unfortunately, we have a very lovely friend uh, who unfortunately wasn't able to make it today. I'm not sure if Ek wants me to mention the runner's name. Um, you, uh, you can, you can mention them. They'll, they'll be back later. Yes. Um, but yeah, originally we're going to have, uh, the one and only an internal enigma do Sonal 4. Um, but they had to, um, just for reasons, postpone it for the, the next time. So they'll be coming back at a later day. Yes. So make sure to give them some love. They're an awesome dude. And, uh, this is kind of, you know, showing off a little bit to them. So we're going to come to this completely random apartment and Hey, look, our storage room keys, which are for the basement are fitting in here. That's kind of weird. And we come check this out and ooh, that's <laughs> definitely a room right there. That's a, that's a really big reference right there. Yeah. And if we don't try to open it, she, Ugh. she can't even begin to figure it out. Um, unfortunately she's not a Silent Hill fan, but we are. So we get that reference. Fun. So they pretty much made the, uh, the room door to happen in this game from Silent Hill 4, the room. Yes, they did. So that's from Silent Hill 4, and that's going to be the run that Enigma will hopefully run in the future. And you'll see the conclusion as to what happens there. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll, definitely, uh, they'll definitely be back. We're, we're uh, working with them to make sure they're going to be uh, 100%, essentially. Yeah. And with the theme of rooms on this episode of Spree Runs from the Crypt, how could we not show off a room? I mean... That is true. It is the it is room. You had to show off or the rooms. room, the room, though. <laughs> exactly. So now we are going to be heading back to Farber's apartment, and this is actually where we can start being attacked again. So it's a it's a Campbell chicken noodle possibility. Doesn't happen too often. Another way that you can kind of tell when something's happening is the game actually will stutter a bit, like just a very micro stutter to know that it's like spawning something in. Um, that's usually how I tell if, if there's something bad that's going to happen. I kind of keep an eye out and, you know, scouting about making sure everything's okay. So we have our next puzzle, and this is actually a really cool puzzle. So we need to make some uh, luminol, which is the stuff that you spray where it picks up like blood and things like that, and it'll make it light up in the dark. And, ooh, what am I missing? I seem to be missing something. I'm trying to remember what I forgot. Picked up the bulb. Oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot to grab the luminol from no. Erica's apartment. So we gotta take a little bit more right. I, I was so excited to get to the room that I just didn't even think about it. I just realized something. So does the electrician just like not come back ever? Or can you still pick them technically? No, we she is a one character episode only character. Oh yeah. yeah uh oh, yeah, that's, that's not good. That's fine. I like how she's not at all invested about it. She's like, you know what, I'll break into this one house. I mean, it's kind of funny. She does visit Daniel in the hospital. There we go. But uh, yeah, it's actually kind of cool. There was a poll that they originally had where they were going to have one character return in an episode that they weren't in yet, and Alina was on there. I voted for her to come back in episode two, but she did not. Blame the fans. So I'm listening here. I'm just going to wait for the door to stop making spooky noises. I'm given the theme of the show, you might be waiting just uh, just a little bit here. Because we did, need, do need to go through the store. And if we go too early... And there you yes, go. Yes, we're good. 
So that's where the listening mechanic comes in to make sure you don't get grabbed by the evil beings. That is like the only time I've seen someone actually use that correctly. It, it is very useful to not die. <laughs> yep. But um, the cool thing about this game, so right now we're playing as Sophie. Um, you can actually play as Sophie in the first episode. If you play as Sophie in the first episode and she dies, she's not going to be playable here. Instead, if you beat the first episode as Alexander and Sophie dies, you get Alexander here. And so on and so forth. So you can actually play characters that you wouldn't think would be on that level and be totally fine with them, which is really cool. So, it's kind of that chain of effect where if Sophie dies, you get to play as someone else later on. Or if you choose this character, they might be available the next one. Like, if we played as Renee in this episode, we would be able to play as him on episode 3. If we don't play as Renee, then you don't get him for episode 3. So, it's stuff like that, which is really cool about this game. Like, you can do a lot of playthroughs and still not, like, ever, you know, play as Alexander on episode 4. Most people don't know that you can play as him on there. So that's like the really fun so, stuff. So uh, a quick, um, quick question, just uh, in general, uh, since we are getting nearer and nearer to the end of the run here, um, is there like a community for Song of Horror? Do you want to have any like shout outs for anyone? In yeah, um, let me give a shout out to my friend Zeman. He was the very first person to ever run this game, um, way back when it came out and only had episode one. I started around when episode two was released. And then I took a pretty extended break before I'm coming back to it now for speedruns from the crypt. And I kind of forgot how fun it was, so I'm glad that I'm returning to it. But shout out to Z-Man. Shout out to Juho for being one of the only other runners to uh, do this game. <laughs> Even if he's only done episode one, I still count him as yeah. a runner. Um, but yeah, we actually have a Discord. It's kind of dead now, but there's a lot of really good resources there if you're interested in choosing that. Um, I think there was like one of the, like, the, the developers in there, isn't there? Yes, we do have I'm a developer thinking, yeah. in there as well. Uh, really, really cool person. Actually, you know, listened to a lot of the, the feedback that I gave. And they, um, fun, fun fact, not to toot my own horn here, but there was a change to episode three that I offered and that they actually added into the game, which made they it so Renee listened. had that, a... That one, that yeah. one they actually listened. There we go. So we're going to be draining these puzzles. We need to make some luminol. So we need to drain these in very specific ways. So we're going to stop C at 100, D at 200, and then we're going to turn these ones at the same time and then stop B at 375 when we see it on A. Right about there. And we need to stop this one at 225. And that'll make it work. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So there we go. Uh-oh. Uh, uh uh oh, that's not supposed to happen. Uh, we added a little too much of the A compound. Oh no, oh no. I... Now you have to restart oh, it's fine. It's fine. everything all over again. No, it's fine. It's fine. It, it, it's gonna be a little watered down, but it's okay. It's not the uh -huh. exact thing, but you know, uh -huh. science isn't an exact science. Right, science. <laughs> it's fine. It'll probably work. Don't worry. Uh -huh. about it. So now we're going to be heading to the basement. Um, this is probably the casual player's least favorite part of the game because it is a confusing mess of rooms and also absolutely terrifying because you are getting chased down constantly. So if you're not a fan of the door, oh boy, you're going to see a lot of the door. Can I ask how we are doing on time, by the way? Yeah, right now you're at a 49. Oh, we're, we're fine. We're perfect. A little bit more than I wanted to be, but we're going to be definitely underestimated. <laughs> so that's okay. That's that's the goal. No, no Ricardo memes. Hopefully, where we just get a random, hopefully just get not. a random enemy spawn just out of nowhere like fifty times. Oh yeah, I'm just saying, like, don't jinx it. I, I know the feeling. Dude, the, My game crashed on the last run. <laughs> the moment I said, you, hopefully no memes, I got a stutter, it. and I thought we were getting a spawn here. You jinxed it yourself, Eck. I did by saying that's never happened before in a good Ooh. way. <laughs> Here we go. It's a curse. Don't say it. that's never happened before in a good way. Trust me. It's bad. <laughs> so now we got the door open. You know, we she likes her Febreze candles. She also likes her Febreze spray. So we're going to be spraying this around. Getting it all nice and smelling like Hawaiian tropic citrus. Febreze which, spray, you said. Yeah. 
That's what happens when you have too much A compound. It goes from the luminol to, to this. Uh-huh. <laughs> also, this is fine. The devil? This is fine. Totally fine. Very fine. <laughs> We're just gonna hide from it. It'll be okay. Okay, it's not okay. That's fine. What doors do you want the spirits of the underworld from entering the room? They're very good doors. I don't know, maybe no, just bring no, no. salt She's or something. Strong. She's just strong and that's it. <laughs> I gotta listen here. Don't mind those noises. It's just a, uh, a little speaker thing. Just, oh, we got good RNG. Cool. Normal? It's totally normal. Yep. Oh, that's bad. All right. Oh, so no. normally we could just run to the end, even if we got an immediate door spawn. However, if that uh, starts playing, you you have to go back in immediately if it happens. Oh. I'm not hearing anything. All right, we're okay. So now we're just going to be running to the end, spraying our Febreze, making sure everything smells nice. It's kind of a dingy basement. Hasn't had a lot of love to it. And then we're coming up to the first big quote-unquote skip of the game. That's right, we finally got to a real skip. So, we needed to find this wardrobe because this is where the box was originally from. The song of horror that Daniel found. This was what it originally was. And what we're going to do here is normally we would need to listen to this tape. And it's a really long tape and you can't exit out of it. However, if you click on this wardrobe, it brings up a prompt. It lets us bring up our inventory and we can completely skip the dialogue. So now we need to know to go to Farber's office, but we don't need to listen to the entire like 20 or 30 second long thing. And you can't actually leave the room until you listen to it entirely. Oh yeah, uh, cool. I'm coming for like the next part also. Like it's, it's about it's about to end really soon as well. Um, yeah. About of the uh, view description. Yeah, so again, uh, this is the ending is coming up. I want to give a quick warning. Um, if you don't like uh, imagery of suicide, uh, make sure to tune out now. Again, totally don't blame you. It's totally okay. It's a very short scene, but if you aren't comfortable with it, just wanted to make everybody uh, aware of it. Unfortunately, it's... We do a lot of horror games here, but uh, we do want to make sure everyone's all comfortable with what you see. We do get some dark territory, so we like to give these warnings. So thank you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And unfortunately, it is not skippable. It is uh, one of the few forced cutscenes that we have to watch. But time is going to be coming up here in about a minute, so we want to get ready for that on tech. Just going to be making our way back over to uh, Farber's office. I don't think we can actually get attacked in this part. I'm not too sure, but we do got a new accessory of uh, Sophie's really cool UV lights. It kind of looks like um, a Dicey's background. Yeah, it has all the blue lights on his door. Yeah. That's right. So just got to come over here. And if you like this game, make sure to check it out. Um, I don't know if you can still buy it in episodes, but I believe the first episode is free at least to try. So if old school survival horror games are your thing and you like really good puzzles, really good scares, uh, make sure to check this out. It's a really, really good game. Um, but with that, thank you guys for watching me. If you want to find more, um, you can follow me at twitch.tv slash demonic robots. I want to give uh, thanks to Juho, who's going to be doing Devotion next. Uh, yep. Good luck with that. And time should Thank be coming you. up here in about 10 seconds. But right about now. And that is Sonic All right, let's see the ascending, though. Yes. 5411, nice. I'll take that. So we do find Isaac. He's not actually, he did not kill himself. He was actually killed by the presence. That's a, a lore can, in fact, that you learn about later on. But um, it took over his mind and, and killed him, so... Um, you can actually find out more about the game later on. And along with that, we also need to find out... Uh, we have the box with us, this uh, very spooky evil box. We give it back to its original owner, thinking something would happen and that it would fix it. However, after we gave it back to the owner, we uh, we get some little, little scares right here. So again, this is not Catherine Husher from episode one. This is a different character entirely that we see here. But hey, you know, Daniel is just getting up after a nap on the couch. And uh, uh oh, oh, that's not good. Oh, oh, it's fine. Ooh. Oh, it was there. Oh, 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 that's not good either. Uh, Daniel. Oh, it's fine. It's, it's all good. <laughs> Everything's fine in this game. That has not been an 
So because Daniel is still hallucinating and is still under the presence attack, we do need to find Husher. And we need to find out where he went, and that's what you find out in episode three. And if you're curious about what happens there, you are going to have to check it out yourself. But, you know, that'll, that'll be on your choice. But thank you guys for watching. Once again, I'm Demonic Robots, joined by Juho with Egg Dices, the man hosting. Thank you so much for having me. And hopefully you guys will stick around for the next game, which is going to be Devotion, ran by my commentator here, Juho. We'll definitely be having a fun time with that. And thank you again, Demonic, for uh, showing us the run of Song of Horror. I think this game is really cool. It's a nice uh, little uh, revival of the original survival horror thing. So it's very fitting for the theme of uh, rooms and homes, yeah. if you, uh, you know what I'm talking about. And this game was made... Anyway. One little thing. Uh, this game took about eight years to make. It was in development for a long time. It's a very big passion project. So if you like indie games, make sure to support the devs. You say eight years? Yeah, was, it was eight it, years. I, I believe it came out in 2013 huh. originally is like when they did it. They tried to Kickstarter it. It wasn't able to get funded. And then they eventually got a publisher to pick it up and finished up in about 2020. So long, long time. I'd definitely say it's a fun game for my plan. I still don't even beat it. I have two episodes left, but it's pretty fun. So it's definitely uh, apparently it's also in the Humble Bundle from what people are typing in chat. Ooh. So it's pretty fun. Anyway, uh, while people look into that, and uh, Demonic, I do want to thank you and Juo both again for uh, show, being able to show Song of Horror. Uh, we're going to get ready for the next run. Before that, we're going to cut to a break. Uh, before we begin, though, I just want to say uh, that GD Hotfix is a series of shows that happens every week here on Games Done Quick. Uh, information for all the Hotfix shows can be found at gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix. As well, we will be cutting over to an ad uh, while we can just kind of wait and set up the next game. We'll be having Devotion with Jewhorse, who's doing commentary here. Uh, as well, if you'd like to avoid the ads, um, subbing or doing a Prime sub will help avoid that and does help GDQ during the interim of shows. So, thank you in advance for that, and we'll be right back. And we are back. So, Song of Horror is pretty fun. It's quite a nice uh, callback to the original Strive of Horror. But one of the big games I wanted to have on this show for a while now, this is one of my personal favorite games of all time, is Devotion. And I'm showing my devotion to the show by offering this game. For those of you who do not know what this game is, or maybe you may have faintly heard about it, uh, this is known as an incredibly rare horror game because there is currently no real ways of obtaining it unless you bought it on Steam in 2019 when it released, or if you managed to obtain a physical copy such as this one. Um, I like my physical copy. Really, it's just an excuse for me to show this off more. But um, this game is really nice. It's a red candle game. They also made a game called Detention, which is quite nice. Um, we have a couple of speedrunners on deck today who actually have copies of the game and are able to speedrun it. Uh, so it should be pretty fun with that. But I just want to be able to show you such a beautiful game because it really is a cool game. And we'll be focusing on how interesting and unique it really is. So I just want to put that out there. Uh, we also have a warning to the end of that game because it does get a bit dicey in terms of some just, let's say, visceral content. But I do really hope that you enjoy the game coming up with Devotion. Very, very often I'm going to show games such as this one, so... Yeah. Anyway, we're going to be having Devotion ran by Jewhorse, so let's go on to that. Hey, my name is Juho or Jewhorse. Uh, I am a speedrunner from Singapore. So uh, as you can see, like outside right now, it's kind of a bit like morning-ish, afternoon-ish. Yeah, I'm from Singapore. Uh, we're gonna play Devotion. We're gonna speed on Devotion. And this is uh, something that is really rare to even see on GDQ or even like anywhere uh, on a speedrun event. Uh, I'm really, really happy to actually run this game uh, for Egg Dice's show uh, because Egg Dice is a really good friend of mine as well. Um, oh, I love this game too. Yeah, like, with me. A good game. Yes, with me on the commentary is gonna be Darwin, so. Hi, I'm Starwin. I wish I had this game physically, but I don't. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah. We got it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I also have the game uh, physically as well. So, uh, yeah. So, we're going to start off with Devotion uh, pretty soon. But um, basically, this game is a 2019 um, indie horror game. One of the best indie horror games, in my opinion. If you can get this game, do get this game. Uh, it talks about a father who uh, is really devoted into trying to get... The daughter to um, how you say to get well. Uh, but we're gonna start on in three, two, one, go. We and yeah, now we have so, a cutscene. <laughs> yeah, so we start off with a cutscene now. 
uh basically this cutscene is gonna be an, an an hour 30 and also like hour 30. uh if you, you say an hour 30 oh it's always like uh, a minute and 30 seconds sorry <laughs> <laughs> so um an hour 30 an is hour a bit 30 long, long cutscene all right so um like i said this this cutscene is gonna be uh, a minute 30. uh i can talk about the the gameplay this is like kind of like a walking simulator kind of um game uh where you just walk towards the end there's not really a lot of good skips there are speed tech and a lot of optimization in this game uh in fact believe it or not uh star went over here was the first person uh to get a sub 119 if i'm not mistaken yeah yeah. Me, me, me and Juho went back and forth for a little bit. Yeah, uh, went back. Yeah. Juho is very Wait, don't, adamant. Don't you mean sub 109? Yeah, well, is uh, it 109? Oh, yeah, it's, it's like 109. Yeah, sub 109. Because yeah. I have like a 110 in this game. I don't even yeah. know. But me and Juho went remember. back and forth with this yeah. for a bit. And uh, Juho really has uh, his uh, devotion towards this game because he does not want to give game. up the record. I didn't want to devotion give, I didn't want to give it to a Western person. <laughs> See, so I was mean. like, I'm, I'm, I'm holding it on to the Asian side of uh, the speedrunning community. But yeah. Um, Are you saying that you're devoted? He's devoted. Very devoted. Yeah. But uh, over here is like a cutscene talking about, um, how you say, talking about this little girl <laughs> or um, the, the father's daughter called Du, du Mei Sing. Uh, du Mei Sing, fun fact, is um, translated in Chinese to beautiful hearts, so there's that. And also we're playing as Wu Feng, if I'm not mistaken. Which translates to, I'm Fuck a you, jerk. Yeah. <laughs> He's oh, a jerk. That's a very this, this, this. Also, isn't it Mei Xin? Uh, Mei Xin is what you see, but um, in Chinese it's Mei Xing. Because the, uh, the Chinese character for Xing is X-I-N. Neat. Yes. So, really, really stupid fact about that cutscene. Uh, you actually can move around and look at things, but if you do, you lose time. You lose two seconds, sometimes four. Mm -hmm. That's why I just don't move at all. If you don't move, if you don't move, it'll be fine every single time. Yeah, it just lasts. You, I'm thing very proud of you. That was the fastest 90 minute cutscene I've ever it's watched. Pretty good. <laughs> very, very, very you shaved a 90 minute because... cutscene down to two minutes. <laughs> but yeah, uh, right now we actually move in this game. So um, yeah, this whole theme right now is just going into rooms. Uh, this is kind of like if you guys do know about PT or like the, the um, playable teaser for Silent Hills. It's kind of like that, but uh, it's made by a Taiwanese company. Red Candle Games. Yes. Shoutouts right. to Red Candle Games making games. Please make more games because your games are I very, heard they are. They, they very are good. probably going to make more games soon. If you if you but haven't yeah, played but... this or Detention or watch Detention on Netflix, please do. Yeah, we're coming up to our first um, quote unquote. I, I would say spoiler, I guess. Jump scare. No, it's a spooky. But that's just an umbrella. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look that spooky. The yep. red umbrella for Red Kendall Games. Oh, there's a woman oh. right behind us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you did that. I like how you almost pass her. <laughs> What's funny is if you turn around there. fast enough, the light won't even turn on. You won't even see what happens. Yeah, you don't even see the the woman at all. But yeah, that that was supposed to be the wife of uh, mm -hmm. Pungi. All right, I need to take this note because it's gonna uh, do a little trigger event. Mm -hmm. uh, take this thing. I need to take the stuff on the table right here. Um, put the trophy on the shelf. And go into the kitchen and put the uh, bowls on a tray so like he like we were saying earlier this is you know one of the, it's kind of a walking sim game but things like this like you put something down you immediately need to turn around so you can start walking in the right direction little yep. things like that are what make the optimization in this game like really really important because right now there's not a lot of time to save and with the current record and uh, the current uh, top two times on the yeah, board it's really really optimized but uh, yeah, we're gonna go into one of the uh, trigger points right here, uh, which is another ah. jump scare. <laughs> Somebody threw a doll at that that breaker. <laughs> All right. All right. Now we have to walk towards this radio and. Another one of your scares? Ah. Uh, I thought you're gonna get, get lighter. That happens every time. We need get, every time I see lighter. a radio that happens uh, to me. It's gonna help us look in the dark. That's a good thing. And then uh, there are some uh, 
little parts where you need to examine something. Sometimes you need to have the lighter out to even read it. So kind of like Sound Hill 2 and Sound Hill 3 and whatnot. But there are also some times where it's actually quicker to uh, unequip to the lighter. Put, yeah, put down uh, the lighter. To, to, to activate the whatever thing that you're trying to look at. Yeah, this, I, I think this was found out by you actually, because when you got into the game, I didn't know about it until you told me about it. There's a handful of things you want to unequip the lighter uh, before doing things because he has to do the animation. Right. So you, you only lose like, like you know, fractions of a second. It's really not that right. big of a deal, but it'll add up. Yeah. You have to take more keys. Oh, by the way, th those keys later on, it will represent something in the next chapter. So yeah. Dude, I love this room and it just, it's so lame that in the speed run, we just kind of ignore all the cool stuff. We just ignore everything. Yep. Yeah. Like there's all the, the this room just has a bunch of these uh, mannequins and dolls everywhere. If you actually go explore like in the kitchen and stuff, you'll actually start getting chased. Like you'll look behind you and nothing will be behind you. You walk forward and you look behind you again, they'll be like chasing you. It's really, really creepy. All right. This is one of the parts where I do not need my lighter mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. if I have my lighter, I have to put down the lighter and then it will waste a few seconds. Which again, was found by Starwind for some reason. What? I, I, that's what I do. I pick up games and learn things. That's true. You only picked up the that's game, true. you picked up the game like two months ago. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, gonna put the uh, bomb book on the piano and... Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, hey, it's our birthday, everyone. Happy birthday to you. Someone's birthday, 44, <laughs> uh, 444,999. That's a, that's a that's big a, birthday. That's a that's big a, age. That's a big that's old a birthday. That's a lot of... Uh, 444,999. Yeah, uh, this, I just part, this part it, is I just, just like the birthday, yeah. I just realized Alpha, it was basically. a mother-daughter uh, ballerinas. I didn't realize mm -hmm. that before. Yep. I'm learning things. I mean, it's a lot of years that you can have that happen. TV! TV! We're gonna watch a uh, show right here. I don't remember what's it called. It's like... It's like Rainbow... Rainbow yeah. something. I don't remember what's it called. Uh, press 1 in the chat if you had a TV like this growing up. <laughs> yep. Which it's probably gonna be about 20 of you. They would, they would, they would say about the show. I I Rainbow really Star asked. Stage, there we yeah, go. Rainbow, yeah, Rainbow Star Stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, basically, what Rainbow Star Stage is, is that this is like a competition where like, uh, you have like these kids singing or like, yeah, doing a performance or something like that. Uh, believe it or not, the the daughter of this father, Dumei Singh, actually joined into this, um, this contest or, or um yeah this competition i guess what's really really cool about that show though is that that's not like something that they found like on tv no they made that they made the yeah, sets. they made they got that the, they whole got the, set they got the people it's so good mm -hmm. and, and you don't see oh, yeah, the show Starwind. that often that's what's crazy mm -hmm. you'd be happy to know i just realized i've been muted this whole time <gasps> ecky d what are you doing Oh, another jump scare right know. here. Maybe happy to know. There's a lot of ones in I've chat. I've been looking at there. I'm actually surprised. So many ones. All right, we'll have to walk into this uh, hallway right here. There's another room uh, in this hallway we're going to go to right now. This is actually one of the doors where it doesn't matter how well lit it is. If you do not have your lighter out, you cannot open this door. Well, I mean, it's dark. Uh, like, you, like you took the right when I said that you put the lighter up. Don't worry, don't worry about it. I just <laughs> accidentally hit it. I accidentally hit it. Don't worry about it. All right, this is one of the skins that also Starwin actually found as well. Already. So you, if you look at the text right here, is it says washing? Wash your hands before you enter. Right? You don't have to click on the sign itself. You can yeah. just hover your mouse and just see the text, and then go back. Uh, go towards the bathroom. Yeah, also, usually, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh. PTSD, I guess. Uh, no, no, not PTSD. OCD. There's some OCD stuff. I must right say here. A PSA. Yeah. Use soap when you wash your hands, everyone. True. We, we mm -hmm. just had a. We just talked about your taking care of your teeth. Now take care of your hands too. Exactly. You brush your teeth. Now you have to wash your hands. But the, what uh, Juho was saying about the door, yeah. If you actually just try to click on the door, it'll actually do a little cutscene where he tries to open the door, but it's locked. And then I just yeah, you have to look at the run, sign. Yeah, you just run your face into the door, and it's like, oh, okay, you don't have to look at that anymore. 
Alright. No, so I have to look at the door, or like I have to use my lighter at the door, and then uh, do not use my lighter at this one because it's gonna waste a few more seconds, I guess. I hear time with a lighter, yet you're ripping needles out of her body. <laughs> Supposed to signify, I think, Mason, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I'm assuming, yes. Yeah. But the needles are a bit more important than the lighter, aren't they? <laughs> Alright. I'm gonna look at this note. Right? Also, if people. And then there is a. Yeah, there's the right there. If people haven't got the, connected the dots yet, the do the doll is representing his daughter. Mm -hmm. Everything that you're seeing, the doll's going through. The daughter went through. Ooh, that was nice. Whoa. But but can you right. get it on the? Can you get it on the frame? I can. No, <laughs> come on. dude. I literally had this one run where I just like flung my mouse and got it. It was insane. I don't know how, but like it's just. I usually have to move my mouse until I I, I see it at the middle. But yeah. Right. Here comes, right, we have I to would pick say, up this... technically the, the main antagonist. <laughs> yes, this is the actual main antagonist of the game. So basically, this person over here is uh, Dr. Her. But yeah. like, okay, nice so in, in, Chi in the Chinese kind of like saying is actually Dr. Her or Dr. Ho. And okay. um, yeah, she is the con artist of, um, that says like, oh, you have to do this thing to take care of your daughter or to make your daughter actually get better she's, uh, she's a, we will she's actually a, she, talk about it later on yep she's a in, in, in a broad term she's a snake oil salesman she sells mm -hmm. fake things that says well i will cure you if you do this nope uh, that's just not the truth just bad can we say bad juju i guess yeah i suppose yeah, yeah. all right so uh we're almost about to corner. end yeah well it's like a silhouette right here at the corner we're almost about to end uh, chapter one. Mm -hmm. Chapter one is gonna come um, to a close really soon. I need a All these doors go to the same house. Second. That's pretty cool. Yep. Here we go. All right. So, you have to walk towards the couch right here. And we're gonna watch more of uh, Rainbow Star Stage. Yay, Rainbow Star Stage. Now, you haven't really heard a lot of music in this game yet, but the music in this game is fantastic. Music in this game is amazing. Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm still very surprised or like very uh, shocked that they actually made a whole stage uh, yeah, dedicated to this thing. There's a huge block in the credits that just is like, these people did this, in the, for, this for this show. It's insane. Oh yeah, and this little girl right here is actually to Mason. Mm -hmm. Yep. So her so, uh, the, her mother is a, a very very popular singer actress whatever. Yeah. And she's trying to be just like her, and she does she sings very very well. Sadly, we don't get to hear it yet. Yeah, the song is called "Lady of the Pier." Later on, you will hear it. Uh, at the end of the game, you will hear it. It's like a long seven minute unskippable cutscene. Uh, but you will so, hear it later on. So this next part is pretty cool. We're going to keep walking into this painting mm -hmm. and we're going to flick the mouse around so it'll trigger the, the room. And you're going to yep. see Juho move the mouse up and down. This was found out by Punchy. Uh, so uh, you're actually supposed to wait for the room to fill up with, I, I guess it's a, uh, I technically think it's snake wine. It's like, yeah, it's snake wine. And uh, to trigger a cutscene. And apparently if you just move the mouse up and down, it triggers the cutscene faster. Don't know why it does that, but it just does. Yep. All right. And that's the end of chapter one. And here comes yeah. chapter two. This is where cha getting through chapter one, super easy when you're trying to optimize. Chapter two, different story. There's a lot of stuff here. It's a lot of optimization, honestly. Uh, but I, I want how he's uh yeah go ahead first. I, I, I just say I, I love how he's waking up in a bathtub full of wine. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to give a huge, a dream, huge, man. huge shout out to uh, Isofreeze. Basically, uh, he got um both me and Adisus the physical copy of the game, and well, also that's he who actually got it. yeah okay yeah <laughs> and also um. Also, he actually found out this new, uh, this like kind of routing. So, last time we were, we were supposed to go into six rooms. Now we actually go into five rooms, and we go to 1985 first rather than mm -hmm. 1980. Yeah. Also, we were supposed to go to like um, how you say like 
in order of the years, but like yeah. you can actually skip them and just like go into like uh, this one first. We're supposed to be going, we're going to be going to these rooms multiple times and used to, there was a long sequence of like, you know, you had to go to all these rooms a lot, but Juho actually did a bunch of rerouting and made it more optimal to where we don't have to review a lot of rooms. Mm -hmm. So yeah, a big, huge shout out to Isofreeze who actually like, uh, thought about this route and then I just use it to reroute the whole thing and uh, it mm -hmm. actually cuts about a minute ish minute. or two minutes yeah. yeah also I'm seeing in the chat people are asked or people are like snake wine question mark you will understand yeah you will understand later on yep and again so, yeah, yes we, but snake we wine is a real skip, thing too yeah there are actually like three years uh, there's like 1980 1985 and 1986 in 1985 you actually uh Figure, like you kind of like figure out that uh, Mei Sing is actually feeling sick uh, because of like her whole, her whole like I, I guess like anxiety issues or something like that. Um, yeah, this 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 game actually talks a lot about anxiety issues as well. Yeah, uh, towards does. the young uh, mm -hmm. young teens and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, the, lots of sensitive subjects, but I really appreciate Red Candle Games for actually taking that step beyond that line because when you do that you get such amazing games i mean look at like silent hill 2 silent hill 2 pushed the boundary for that and it's still one of the most iconic games ever made in the horror genre and honestly this game is going down that same path like it I, this game is going to be talked about for a long time yeah So uh, kind of going into a question, actually. You guys have talked a lot about the rerouting of this sure. game and all that. Yes. So overall, how much time roughly do you think has been saved through the, the again, like you think, just going, oh, one more room. How much time does that really save in the grand scheme of things? Uh, yeah. As of now or like from last time? Yeah, like it, back from when, because uh, originally I think Punchy had world record in this. Yes. With all the new stuff that was found, the new strategies, about really about how much time do you think was shaved from that? This is really heavily optimized, so I think about like we probably will go down to like a sub 10830. I forgot about this part, you have to look up. Yeah. Mm, maybe a couple seconds. Maybe like probably So Oh no no no, okay. So from me yeah, you learning the game and where Punchy had records, so Punchy has a one oh nine okay, yeah. Punchy has a one oh nine forty. And yep. then I came in and got it down to a 108.54. So you can see roughly about a minute or so, uh, a little bit more than a minute uh, has been saved since uh, uh, a year ago since Punchy has run this game. So there's been uh, yeah. definitely a significant amount of time saved. Also, uh, the maze box. I reset my runs here all the time. I don't know about you, Juho. <laughs> same, same. I hate this. No. Exclamation no. mark play. Exclamation mark play right here. There, you there go. we go. Nice. See, like doing that, doing that optimally saves time. Like it's it's ridiculous. It's at that point where if you make little mistakes like that and you lose like three or four seconds right there, it's kind of hard. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. Hmm. Oh, by the way, uh, here comes the storybook. So, fun fact about this thing, uh, you can get this game, uh, you can get the storybook on the physical copy, which I have it right here. Yeah, the physical copy has the storybook of uh, this thing. You've and opened it, right? You, have you, you've actually opened yeah. your copy, right? Is it like, is it pretty big, like in terms of size? It's not even that big. It's just like, it's quite, yeah, okay, it's, it's hand sized. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was about to talk about the story as well. So basically like the, the, the whole story is just talking about um, this girl called Shasha uh, trying to take care of his, uh, take, care, take care of her father. And because like the father is like getting ill and stuff like that. Uh, eventually, later on, you will find out that the father actually survives and also like gets well, and then they lived in the happy, happily ever after. This and this is the reverse of the game that we're having, that we're playing. Yeah. Yep. This this whole story is you know the whole theme of it is about a, you know a daughter saving her dad, and it's about that bond that a child shares with their parent, and it's something that in the main game of devotion 
is, is is something that you would want to see, but it just didn't happen. Just because the dad just did a bunch of wrong things. He's the just, dad is just dumb, big dumb dumb. But when everything was all you know good and everything, and there was like no drama in this family's life, uh, uh, the father would always read uh, Beijing this uh, this book. Oh, by the way, here see, comes. Oh, go ahead, Here comes go ahead. platformers because I hate platformers. <laughs> yes, this is actually this game actually has a <laughs> platforming. So we're actually going to be playing in the storybook now. And as you're hearing the voices that you're hearing right now, it's uh, actually the dad. Uh, du Feng Yu, he's he's talking and he's reading the book to Machine right now. And you're you're going to see the little uh, the little cute things that Machine does in during this book. It's so cool. I love this. I love this part. Yeah. So like. Du Feng Yu right now is like reading uh, the story to uh, Du Mei Xing. Right mm -hmm. now I need to take this apple, go to this bear, and then we are going to meet uh, three different animals. This is the first animal, this is going to be a bear. Uh, we bear. have to throw this apple to uh, the other side. Hopefully that reaches there. Okay, cool. So if you throw this apple like into the river, it actually wastes a lot of time and you have to go back to uh, the apple tree and get another apple just to throw uh, another apple towards the other side of the bank. Yeah, like uh, there's a really, really optimal spot where you can stand where you don't have to get that close, but it's if you're like off by just a little bit, it'll go in the river and it's really sad. Oh yeah, here's the part where like Du Mei Sing is like, yo, I'm, I'm gonna give you some high IQ. I'm gonna blow, like, I'm gonna use a bubble right here and just like bring this bear, fly away bear. Hi bear. Oh, where is he floating off to? He's going to school. He's going to school. He's going to school. <laughs> so oh, the yes. little drawings I don't know, probably the school. Drawings that, <laughs> little drawings you're seeing are actually in the book. Like that's yeah. what, it, it's it's so cool, man. Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna meet up with two deers, and these two deers are actually just fighting. One v one me on Rust. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Chat, I want you to figure out what will happen next with the drawings. Yeah, please, what, what will what, what will do machine do to uh, get past these uh, rambunctious uh, deer? Platforming, right. platforming. Let's go, let's go. Uh, no, I missed it. No, okay. boo. That was... <laughs> uh, yeah, you can play this game on a controller, but like I'm playing this game on the keyboard anyways. Don't you switch back and forth? No. I thought you did. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can play this no, on the controller can. because I, I have the controller like uh, plugged in at the moment. But like... Uh, you can play this game on the, on the, on the controller or on the keyboard and mouse, so... It just does the same thing as what a keyboard and mouse would do. But real quick, we have to see what the deer do. They can't see very well, that's why they're fighting, so they need some glasses. <laughs> Jeez. Give them some pair give them a pair of glasses give, each. There we give go. Give us the lore of the story. Alright. Okay. Alright, so the controller. So for example, uh on the I only use controller a couple of times throughout the run. One is to get up like uh, a better movement on the uh, marble. marble box. I have yes. a very, very specific way I do it uh, to get it pretty consistent. And then here I, I play controller because platforming on keyboard, I am not a big fan of that. So I do the platforming uh, for here. Yeah, it, it is personal preference. That's it. I usually have a controller right next to me. Also, I use controller at the very end of the game where we had to do a bunch of QTEs. But that's about it. So, yeah, so like I use this, I, I, I played the game on the controller uh, when I was starting off this game. And then, uh, yeah, I just played it on keyboard ever since. It's just like a personal preference, I guess. So Alright, how need, would you we, feed the owl now? Well, we're gonna go get the little grub, but we have to block him. Also, this mm -hmm. bug is super cute. Look how cute he is. You jump over him. That. He's gonna fall. Let me get this bug. There you go. And we are gonna give it to the owl. But Du Mei Sing has a another idea of what he wants to feed the owls, and it's something which which, which is awesome. But <laughs> can we can we can we? I'm about to I'm about to say it, and you know what I'm talking about, Juho, with the bug. To <laughs> <laughs> say it. <laughs> no, I'm gonna wait. We're gonna wait because. 
the Doom Machine was like, oh, we'll feed him the chocolate. Feed him the chocolate. And, I, and Why everyone not? can live. But Shasha's going to yeet the caterpillar off, <laughs> yeet. The, off, the, off the tree. Also, so you can float. Oh, you got the float. Uh, cool. Yeah. The float. You can float. Yeah. Once you go into like the, 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 the tree, you can actually float into the tree. Like, <laughs> the, a neat little glitch, I guess. Yeah. So sadly, the water that was going to grow this flower to save uh, her dad's life, water was no longer there. Yeah, this, the whole story is actually a really, really wholesome story. And like, mm -hmm. you can actually see it on the book itself. Maybe at the end of the run, I could show off, I guess. I don't know. Probably could I show off the game. So Shasha is going to cry as typical good old fairy tale logic. That is the power of love will let the flower grow. And the flower is actually a tulip. Uh, not some super rare flower, but it's just a tulip. Yep. But yeah, uh, as the story like ends, uh, it uh, like it shows that the dad actually got well. And uh, yeah, they mm -hmm. are happily together. So well, if, you guys, if, well. if you guys have ever played Detention, Detention plays kind of like how the storybook is. It's, you know, it's 2D. Uh, so they, they've had, they have that experience with that... Uh, from that for, for, for that perspective. Oh yeah. Uh, at the end of the book as well, you actually get uh, like an origami tulip that mm -hmm. we will see. That's that's, that's the entire reason why we did this is to get this tulip yes. because we need yes. to plant said tulip. So right now we're done with 1985 for now. Later on, we will go back to 1985 just to do a, a few more additional tasks. But right now we are gonna go to 1980. Uh. Oh, oop, it's gone. It 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 it's gr that's what's so. That's why it's so beautiful, man. You're this. We were playing a horror game, and then I, for the last ten minutes we weren't, and now it's just like, oh, we're back into this. It's we're back so into the, great. The, the, the bad stuff right now, huh? All right. So there, there's a line you have to walk here because the chairs can block you. Also, uh, I, I want to say like one in the chat if you actually play mahjong because there's a mahjong table right here. Anyone Dude, plays mahjong? One in the chat. I love mahjong. I really wish I understood it more. I, I do play Mahjong myself. My 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 only experience with Mahjong is watching the anime Akagi, and that's and that's about it. All right, I need to put this code in. Uh, it's zero seven one six. Basically, um, on the on the paper that is on the right side at the moment, it says like, in order to get the code, you have to find my favorite picture with the date on it. So you get you get the date, uh, which is July sixteen. And you had to put it on um, this uh, code, which is 0716. Now we are actually a baby now. We have become baby. Baby. Chad, are you baby? So this is uh, essentially we're going to get... The, the whole reason we're, do, we're going to all these rooms, there's one room that we cannot get into because it is locked by uh, three pieces of this like emblem uh, and we're going to be getting one of those pieces right after this also and, uh, this is uh this is where like the story progresses into saying that uh mei sing is kind of like scared of uh the visitors that are coming into uh her house because mom mm -hmm. and dad actually invited them to the house uh so she hides in this closet so that she could be in kind of like zen but at yeah. the same time, she also wants to practice her singing as well. She has, she, she yeah. essentially has performance anxiety. She doesn't, uh, she feels like she doesn't do as well in front of people. That's what, she, that's what she'll be saying. And she's like, I wish I could just sing in this closet. Yep. But also at the same time, this is where like she got all the inspiration from her mother because her mother was actually like uh, a really popular singer, popular actress. Yeah. Also, I, I did need to mention as well, uh, later on, um, you will see that the father is going to be doing some like screenwriting stuff. He's actually a screenwriter for uh, the game. I mean, Alan sure. sleep, Alan sleep, <laughs> it's Alan sleep. All right, I need to take this, and we are gonna take a fragment. Oh, 
<laughs> I don't I don't sleep. All right. So we have to take this um we have to take the shoe or the high heels. Uh that's going to be for an optional thing. Uh we are going to go ahead and take the vinyl and then behind the vinyl there's a there's a hole. I don't know why there was a hole in there. Uh but we have to make sound right now. We have to make noise. And I have to spend my space bar for the entirety of like 20ish 30 seconds. Yeah, if you guys and pay attention Mason's really like, "Yo, we we I'm here. See see me." Also, yeah. Yeah, uh so if you pay attention, like we're saying like the mom was a, a famous singer, actress and stuff. And the dad's, a, you know, a screenwriter. Why do they live in this drab, drab house? Like it has holes in the wall. Uh, it's really small. Um, it's going to get explained a little bit later on, but it, it is definitely a key uh, 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 point in the story uh, to take in consideration. Hey, hey, uh, dude, if my, if my kid was playing hot for teacher, I'd be very impressed. Yeah, so uh, we have to put this, yeah, we have to put the tulip on the, uh, on the soil right there because later on we have to go back to 1985 and if you actually see right now, if I actually go like right here, uh, you can see like in this hallway or in the room right now you can see all the tulips in there later mm -hmm. on we will go into there but we have to go to 1986 just to get uh another fragment so we yeah. have to take three fragments just to make a circle uh to go back to the main door that uh was closed earlier on yeah so Oops. uh this is part of the optimization and routing that juho did like we grabbed the shoes earlier uh and then we're going to be grabbing a dress and then we're going to be grabbing a tiara right here we need all of those in order to access another fragment. Um, so we're going to do this room first, be able to get the dress. Then we go into the room with the flowers. Or the, do we get the dress in the... We, we get uh, the dress in the, 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 in the tiara. tiara the tiara is right here right yeah. now. Yeah. And then we go into the, the, the area with the flowers. And that's actually going to be the room we're going to... Uh, after we get that fragment, we'll be in that room where we'll be needing to use those three items to get the last fragment. So used to... It was just a little topsy turvy of doing a bunch of back uh, back and forth. But uh, thanks to Juho, he uh, put in the effort and definitely saved a bunch of time for the run. Hey man, I just wanted I just wanted Asian pride towards this speed <laughs> run of the game. All right, no so, Western, <laughs> no Western man, should take this record. I guess I've, I've still got two records. Hey, sh <laughs> <laughs> all right, but yeah, right now it's all about. <laughs> hey 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 hey. But yeah, right now we are actually <laughs> we are actually gonna uh, see a lot of math, a lot of math equations. Uh, Chad, do you know what's uh, one plus one or um, God knows whatever? Twenty-eight times nineteen. All right, we have so, to. Uh, yeah, go ahead. No, I was gonna say this cutscene is, uh, of course, uh, Machine is just uh, in her room. And hearing her parents fighting, this is one of the. This is how she developed her anxiety. Um, she's trying to play with the marbles to, you know, just you know, distract herself from the from the argument. But yeah. so, uh, it does. It doesn't. It, it just stops working for her, and then she ends yes. up having a panic attack. Uh, of course, over here this, is kind of like uh, yeah, uh, over here is kind of like them arguing, and then at mm -hmm. the same time they are arguing about money. This is a very common yeah. thing in uh, Asian kind of families where like if they argue about money, you will know that there's gonna be a divorce that's gonna happen, <laughs> and you will know that there's gonna be a divorce happening pretty soon. I, I'm gonna take your word for it. I mean, I'm Asian. Jew, I, that's what I'm saying. I'm Jew, I think it's because it. you installed the records. That's why this is going to happen now. You led to this. Hey, man. All I'm saying is, I would not want to be doing math while my parents are fighting. They're just like, <laughs> you, you I would want to be doing math in math. general. I mean, that's how I look feel. At, I know, look at all up. the math problems that you're seeing right now, and you're having anxiety towards this thing right now. This is so bad. All right. So, this if you're paying attention. Calm. Yeah, if, if you're paying attention to the conversation, you're kind of seeing that the dad is the reason why everyone's having money problems. Uh, he keeps spending all the money that uh, uh, the mom is making. He's also bu he's buying like really uh, trivial uh, things to like impress friends. And then Guan Yin, which is uh, this god that he believes in, 
he keeps giving uh, donations and stuff to uh, that doctor that we heard on the phone earlier. Yeah. Uh, and also to uh, like a shrine. It's like a goddess. Yeah. Later on, you will know that it's uh, it's called Guanning. Or Sigu Guanning. Sigu Guanning, yeah. Yes. Actually, believe it or not, like, it's a fictional kind of uh, goddess. It's not it's actually a real goddess at all. Okay, so it, was it something that they that Red Candle made up? They actually like just make it up because uh, okay. Guaning is more of like a goddess, but like okay. Siku Guaning is a uh, it's a fictional kind of goddess, I guess. They okay. just they just made it up. Wait, does that mean there's no snake god? I don't know. Have you played? I don't know. Have you played Dread Out? There's plenty of snake gods there. <laughs> yeah. I have not played Dread Out. <laughs> all right, we have to go but back. You, I want to go back. Oh. I heard you talking trash about records, Juo. <laughs> well, I, I do have a record for this game, so. Or oh, this category, actually. Oh, I did start. I'll take it back. No, so currently, Juho is two seconds ahead of my time. He had Juho, Juho has record for any percent and uh, chapter what is it? Cha chapter two any percent, and I have chapter two hundred percent in all game or uh, all game hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Hundred percent literally what, consists of picking up all the notes, and it's not. Yeah, when I got into this game, I told myself that like whenever if someone actually beats the record, I'm just gonna come back and just take it. And sorry when actually came back uh came to like the game like two months ago and just like take the wreck and i was like okay you know what i'm just gonna take it back i guess this game is In fairness by the way yeah. my entire point was vinyl records not speed speedrun roll records Ooh. talking about hey, records anyway vinyl records are great it's a 12 by 12 album you get artwork it plays nicely it's here's warm. the thing Dices, um never invite me again to your show Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. You'll be invited back. No, I'm not going to accept. I refuse. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Say that now. You're right. All right. We have to put all the uh, the dress items or like the uh, clothing items into this. Uh, I don't know. This also, whatever thing um, it is. Ice. Okay. The, the menu in this game will lag. If like you're mashing an input, it will keep going over. Isofreeze mm -hmm. had a way of picking up items to where each of the items that we need to put into that jug of wine we're right next to each other. Like, yeah, that it's it's so nice. Like super, like how you say, um, how you say, it? I don't know. Optimize. There we go. All right, we have to go back to 1986. There is a lot of uh, these, uh, I, I guess, wine. pots. Yeah, wine. I think it's pots like right wine there. jugs. Yeah. So basically, now you actually know about the the whole snake wine issue. And you were putting uh, clothing into a pot to make snake wine. And uh, yeah, there's that. So we're gonna get our last fragment, which is the third fragment. And we have to put it together to a, uh, like, a, in a circle to a door. There's, a, there's your snake, everybody. It's a big boy. Yep. He's a big Very long snake right there. Just need to go all the way towards the end right here. So yeah, uh, Meishin is talking talk right. About, yeah, oh, do we ahead. talk about what happens over here? Uh, Meishin is pretty much just talking about how uh, anytime she is feeling sick, which is just her anxiety, but her dad doesn't believe it's that. She thinks she's like possessed by she's something like, evil. Yeah, she's like possessed a psycho. So like the uh, the dad actually tries to like make snake wine or get snake wine just to put Meishin into a tub and some musho for seven days and yeah. this so is that, like the outcome of it so you're getting like a little tidbits of that right now uh that whole the whole scheme that the basically the snake oil says salesman the uh con artist uh that whole plan will come into light in a little bit we are actually at the end of chapter two we're going on to chapter three yep uh, but yeah uh so right there it, you can kind of see that machine is just like uh, she's really attached to her father she really likes her father but he just, uh, he's just he's just right. it, it, it's, 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 it's children's ignorance like she yeah. doesn't know the right from the wrong if her dad says it's okay she's gonna believe it uh hey, Drew, is your game bugging out i've seen you walk down this hallway dude like, i'm telling you I, I think it's bugging out right now uh uh i have uh Excuse me? Hello? Uh oh. Someone needs to change yeah. that light. Uh, what's gonna happen? I, I, oh, <gasps> I, had to, I had to run away. <laughs> oh. 
So All right. uh, basically this right now behind fun. us is actually the, the wife that is actually chasing us right now. So we have to just run away right now. Actually, I can just turn, turn around and yeah, she's yeah, right Yeah, show there. it off. Like, yeah, I'll it's... show it off, I guess. You can eat, you eat the death. You're allowed to. We have plenty there of time. <laughs> yeah, this is one of the few times in the game where you can die. <laughs> like... It's actually really cool, too. All right. Okay. So this is like a, this is a huge maze. Uh, it's not super complicated. Uh, there'll be one part where if you keep going the same direction, you're just gonna keep going in circles. Um, yeah, we're but just gonna look behind a few more times. If, if if everyone has been paying attention, we've been talking about how the dad is a bad person. He's made a bunch of bad mistakes. And blah blah blah. We never really talked about the mom. We've only said that she's an you know an actress, a singer. So why is the game show depicting? the mom in such a negative way like she's a demon chasing us essentially essentially at this point it's how the dad perceives the mom she thinks it's the mom's fault that everything has gone you know south essentially um and that's why <laughs> we're seeing this right now which is not true it, it, it's a hundred percent not true all right so I, I I like to say this part as like the Silent Hill 2 part where you actually run towards the elevator and like you don't save uh Mary. Mary. Mary oh, run! Maria, yeah. Oh yeah, it's Maria, that's right. Yeah, Maria. No, we learned from last time it's parking lot. Parking lot? Yeah, you've seen Silent Hill 2 hard mode. Yeah. So yeah, you get to see the wife for like the last time. If you pay really close attention right here, she looks like a demon, but she's gonna turn back to normal, like, and like, for a split second. Right here. Oh, not yet. Not yet. It's coming. Yeah, there she is. Right there, she's normal. And goodbye. All right. So this is gonna be about like four minutes of cutscenes. So like, we, I don't know what to talk about at the moment. I guess more well, about the story. Whole, I guess. I talk yeah. about how you insulted records. Uh, yeah, I have a record myself. Like an actual vinyl record myself. One record. They're good. They're good. <laughs> so, but yeah, yeah, this game is pretty fun. This yeah. next part, this whole cutscene that we're waiting for right here is pretty much explaining uh, the, mo uh, the mom is actually being interviewed by, I guess, like a news station or a radio station and uh, kind of giving her uh, point of view on a lot of things like Oh, it's like, oh, you know, we miss you from singing. It's like, well, what have you been doing? She's like, oh, I'm trying to take care of my family. Uh, but she straight up doesn't care. At this one point, he, she calls out the dad being like, yep. it's his, like, he's just not, he's lost. Like he doesn't, he's not himself yeah. anymore. And, but he, but, he hates for teacher. <laughs> Yeah, like, uh, at this part is, <laughs> at this part, like, the summary of this part is just that, like, uh, the wife just divorced the husband because the husband is yeah. just, I, I feel like the, the, the husband is just dumb, that's all. But at the same time, he's, like, he's devoted. Yes, he's devoted to taking he, care of the daughter. He cares about his daughter so much that he's so blind to actually yeah. seeing what the, the real problem is. The worst is. thing about, the, the worst thing about the, the, the father is that, like, he actually thinks that the daughter is actually possessed or psych psychotic. Later on in the game, you will see like mm -hmm. um, you will see Du Feng Yu actually holding up the the medical like results for um, Du Mei Sing, and then it says mm -hmm. like, oh, you have to, uh, you have to bring her to like psych like like psychology or something, or, like a, a it, essentially it, essentially like it was a bunch of blood work that shows that there is nothing physically wrong with the child. Yeah, but they recommended that she go see a psychologist because she definitely has mental issues. Like she does have anxiety. Like it, it, it shows she has a panic disorder because of her yeah. family, and it's all because, it's all because, all because of <laughs> the, the, this the, guy right the, here. This guy is just dumb. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So also, see... Ju, I'm surprised that during the waiting you didn't hold up your copy of Devotion. Should I? I can do it right now. Like. Uh, a few people have been asking, how do you have yeah, this I have, game? Yeah, people okay, have been asking. So I got the copy. game. Um, it's a physical copy of the game. By the way, I live in Singapore. So like Taiwan and Singapore, they're kind of nearby, I guess, uh, how, on how you get, can get the game. Uh, but I do give a huge, huge props to Isofreeze because he actually bought me the game. Or like he got me the game because he, he lives in Taiwan. You can't really get the game outside of Taiwan. You have to get someone who is from Taiwan to buy the game for you. And Ice the Feast, who is 
a detention runner and a devotion runner. Um, he bought the game. And uh, he actually bought Egg Dice's the game as well. Uh, that's why he has the... I have both the Steam copy and the physical copy. Yeah. I got all the achievements on Steam. It's my little... Cool flex. Appreciate so, that. Uh, so uh, yeah, if anyone flex. wants the physical copy of the game, you can you can call me. I will call Ice of Freeze, but it's first come, you know, first serve. You know it's pre-order only, right? It's no longer available. No, it's no, no. When it, when it, if it comes up again, it's first come, first serve basis. As, I will be your... Uh, as a guy man. that really, as a guy that really wanted the physical edition, I always scout eBay for it. And the last time I actually saw a copy that was brand new, it, uh, it went for like two hundred and fifty dollars, which was not how much this thing cost. Oh, yeah, I pay, I pay yeah. Like this thing actually cost forty dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, we can see your thing. Two hundred fifty dollars is like God. Also, story-wise, this must be like the perfect future, the perfect present. So now we're in the perfect time. You see the fish is alive or listen to our daughter on TV. It's life is good. Except There's nothing wrong. Oh. Shut up. Oh. Yeah, life is good. Oh. We love the song. Don't don't do it. It's just a nice song. There's definitely nothing wrong with this room right now. This is the best the best song. Uh oh. Ow. Uh oh. <coughs> uh oh. Damn. Uh oh. Well, you are know we what time get, it is. Are we gonna get confrontation? No, we amazing? need. I think we're clip, going to clip, get devotion. Where is she right now? This is spooky. Uh. Yeah. So what's what's funny is when the room is closing in like that, you can actually get put on top of the desk, and it looks like you clip out of bounds, but it doesn't really do anything. Yeah, here comes another unskippable cutscene because you can't skip it for another like three to four minutes. Yeah. See, you have to do the tech you do in the beginning of the game, and you skip that ninety-minute cutscene. Oh. Oh yeah, this is this is, uh, this is the whole kind of like reason why she has like anxiety issues and also panic attacks and stuff like that. This, this is quite sad. Where, where, where she's been, I've been, so I know that feel. That's this game hits home, and it probably hits home for a lot of people that have anxiety yeah. issues for sure. It does. Honestly, this whole game hits home to me because uh, I have uh, a family who's like kind of divorced as well. So like, mm -hmm. this really hits home a lot, and it's it's one of the reasons why this game is actually one of my favorite games of all time. Even though I got the game like a year later after uh, that thing happened. So, yeah, that's a big... Oh, an uh, another thing that we really didn't explain, uh, it was way back at the very beginning of Chapter 2. It's where the little doll was going around, like, the little track. Um, so we, we... There's a part where, like, she's putting her medicine in the fish tank, and the fish dies. Like, and that fish was, like, the dad's, like, prized fish. They're really expensive. Yeah. I think she actually, like, gave medicine... Like pills through the fish? She killed the fish, yeah, yes, yeah. like a $10,000 yeah. fish. So here's the paper saying like, x-ray and blood work, perfect, no physical ailments, recommended to psychiatric department. And the dad is not having it. Yep. And then now oh, he tears the paper apart. What you attempted to set yeah. yeah. All right, this chapter, this chapter is gonna be uh, the chapter where I'm like slowly, I'm gonna say like view descriptions advice for this one. Well that point when we get yeah it's not it. at this point but like this the, the, point, this is the chapter. content morning yes yeah this is the chapter where like it gives it. out the uh the thing yeah so master who is uh saying oh come on over come over we we, we can we can talk to see who see who in and get guidance you, and you yep. know you can give me money and then i'll tell you what to do and that you know this is how like the family doesn't have money because this guy believes this guy actually, the stuff like, sold everything <laughs> Or like gave everything towards this like shrine right here. This part is really it, it's long in a speed run sense. This part is actually pretty slow and pretty boring, but yeah. in a casual sense, this part is really cool. Mm -hmm. All right, now we are gonna blindfold ourselves, or he's gonna blindfold himself, so that he could see like, uh, kind of like, how do you say this, like? 
<laughs> I don't know. It's like another realm. Think of it as like your mind's like eye. Like you're, yep. you're literally delving into the depths of your mind. It's like a third eye, yeah. Right here, he's praying. He's like, please help my daughter. She's sick. Right. So here comes a uh, a little bit of a cool skip, I guess. Uh, basically, you... <laughs> You go to this corner right here, and you have to look at this. Uh, you have to look at this flame until one line that says, uh, "You you need to go find her." Something like yeah. that. So we have so, to look at this flame for right. like yeah, probably right about like here. 10, 20 really seconds, quick. and then afterwards, when the line comes up, you have to turn towards the door right behind us and open it up. Because if you can uh, if you like turn around right now. Hold up. Really quick, Joe Star, I have an important question to ask If it's you. a pun, I'm not answering. It's not. Okay. If you could own a $10,000 fish, would you own one? No. No. God. But $10,000 fish. If it's a, why? Who, who, in the right, who in the right mind would actually spend ten thousand dollars on on? I'm just saying, if you can own one, maybe you get a good deal. I'd maybe rather, it's like one thousand. I'd rather have a ten thousand dollar. Like fish Fell tank truck. filled with multiple fish than one. Yeah, but like I said, I don't uh, know, man. Yeah. Think about it. Like I said, at that part, uh, the door actually doesn't really show up at all until that one line where it says like, "Oh, you have to go search for her," and then it will brighten up. Uh, it will reveal the door and it will brighten up, and then you can actually go through it. So but yeah, uh, this is right so now is just a walking simulator. So, like an so auto Juho, scroller, I guess. Yes. Juho, about, about, the, about that part you were just explaining, you, you realize you don't have to look at the candle the whole time? No, you do. You do. You actually you do. What are you talking you about? Don't. Nope. Really? Go watch my run. Go watch my mm. run. After I the... You just do. After the... I think it's the... After the, after, the, after the second line, you can move around, and if you actually oh, turn actually. around and look, you can see the outline of the door. You just look at the door and just mash so you get it on the first frame. Oh, interesting. I, All right. I, I promise. But then again, I... <laughs> Uh, this game is just a one and done, I guess. But I'm I'm really glad to showcase this game, anyways. Yeah. Like I said, this game is amazing. Also, I don't want to mention chat poll them the same question I did, and apparently everyone agrees with Starwin that they do not want the ten thousand dollar fish. Do I do, do they I would eat the ten dollar fish? Do I? They would eat the ten thousand dollar fish. The fish. Does everyone think they're Mr. Would Beast you, and they're made of money? Like, no, <laughs> you don't. You don't. You Wait, don't do on. that. Would you eat the ten thousand dollar fish though? No. What if you got for free? If it was a ten thousand dollar fish, I would try to breed the fish to make more ten thousand dollar fish. You people need to think. <laughs> I could buy food with ten thousand dollars. Yeah, it's called ten thousand dollar fish food. Oh, this is fish good. flakes. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, just, <laughs> just cut it. Just cut it into pieces. Make yeah, it to sushi. sushi. Of course. Exactly, that's what chat is I'm, I'm looking, I, I've been looking at chat and everyone's just like, I need the fish. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I agree. I mean, I would want one to have and one to eat. Uh, so also, someone in chat also just asked if the game is fun casually. If you can get your hands on this game, play it. It's, it's amazing casually. Oh. This game is amazing. We're I just, I just saw right a now. comment that just says, uh, we have a $10,000 fish donated to GDQ. <laughs> <laughs> Would GDQ accept a ten thousand dollar fish as a prize? I don't think they would. Uh, a prize? Well, no, you'd have to take care of it. That's what I'm. So <sighs> and also, shipping doesn't sound like it would work very well. How do you ship a ten thousand dollar fish? Carefully. Oh, here comes a funny thing that I actually experienced in this game. So basically, in this part, like you're supposed to like it, walk this is hell. towards right here. Uh, so no, no, no. Uh, done for me. Uh, I actually got soft lock in this game. I got right soft lock in that area. Before. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've had that happen, yeah. Actually. I've yeah. never seen that. I got soft lock in that area, and I had to ask um, the person who actually bought the game, which was Isa Freeze, to actually uh, message the dev on what, what was going on. And then he actually gave me a Steam key uh, to actually play, play this game, and I actually can pass through this part. Uh, oh, the you mean for the physical? Oh, uh, no, I remember you saying that. It was something with the physical edition, right? Yeah, it's only on the physical copy. For some reason, for some reason, like, it's kind of broken-ish. So, like, if you have the physical copy of the game, some of the physical copy of the game can actually be broken. And you can't even play it unless, like, you message the dev and they actually give you a Steam key out of it. So, props to the devs for actually giving a Steam key if the game is actually kind of broken. 
So we're in our, our, our mind palace. Think of it like Persona 5. We're in a palace right now. Um, but we're actually, we're seeing what would be hell. We're seeing all these people like having to hold themselves up against the wall for like all eternity. It's really dark. It's, mm -hmm. See, I thought Joe was saying he went through that because he just entered the area and said, oh, I've been through this before. Oh. No, it was, it was like at that pedestal. If you know that pedestal when you had to go down and then go towards this uh, whole thing, on that real, pedestal, hey, I Juho, couldn't even Juho. get out at all. R real quick, shout out to Junji Ito with Amag Amagari Fault. Yeah, I was talking about, totally I was talking about it like a while ago, yeah. I was talking about it a while ago that this thing is like, yeah. I love Junji Ito and his uh, stuff as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, That's we have to stuff. go up. Also, the, so, these pens. Also, certain, yeah, they're pens. Yeah, yeah. Pens, yeah, yeah. It's kind of referring to like uh, Du Fengyu as a screenwriter because uh, in the story he's actually a screenwriter for the game. Uh, yeah, in the game. <laughs> I, I, I'm really enjoying chat during all this because they are still talking about the fish. I mean, <laughs> I, it's an impressive fish. <laughs> that you're. Ch if I can own an arowana, I would own one. <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, you know, I don't have arowana money. So, I actually want to give a reference really quick. Do it, do it, do it. Do it. Uh, after this hallway, or not a reference, but a warning, I should say. Yes. Uh, after this hallway, we're going to be hitting a massive, uh, let's say, gore section. Uh, it's going to have a lot of, let's say, bodily harm. So if you're not comfortable with self-harm, you may not like what's happening after this hallway. It'll be maybe about, I don't know, five minutes. Roughly about, I think, five minutes. What is my time right now? Right now, you are at a 5640. Yeah, that's, that sounds about right. Yeah, so probably, once you get to about the hallway, five minutes yeah, from whatever ten minutes pops, yeah. Yeah. It's not like like it's not really that long. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. So this is yeah, uh, the this father is... literally having a conversation with himself. He's trusting the best person he knows. So we're going to like, go think of it like, like think of it like him area. talking to his conscious. It's like, like man, you know how you felt about this. Like you knew you, you loved your daughter, but you still did this. Like, yeah, we're just walking towards a door right here. And we have to go towards this door, hopefully. Not a... What's behind the door? Definitely, oh, by all honesty, dreaming about the fish is much nicer than what's about to come up. Yeah, if, yeah seriously. So, Alright. Alright, let's go through this door. Although, um... A nice litmus test of things. Um, I would want to mention this is a horror show. We do have a lot of violent stuff, yeah. and yeah, we I mean, do get to see a different side of gaming that you don't normally get to see in a lot of the daytime aspects. So I do want to say thank you for the nighttime watchers who join us for these horror thank shows. I, we want to say thank you for that. Oh, uh, moreover, thank you for having this game onto uh, the vlog or yeah, onto this segment. Oh yeah, I asked a lot about this game. Yeah. Like, I love this game. This is one of the big games I asked about when I started planning shows. And yeah, I actually tried submitting this game, and this like, on the list, so. I knew it right away that they won't really submit it because of issues and stuff like that. But uh, I really want to give a huge props to Ignisus for actually, uh, for, uh, actually bringing this game up because uh, this game is amazing, and I think everyone should actually play this game if you have the chance to. All right, so. Now right this here, is the, right, this here is go. the gore part. So right here, as is you know some you know wacky, uh, old school religion things you know giving up something as a sacrifice to ensure something that will come into fruition. That's pretty much what we're doing here. We're going to be sacrificing very specific things. One is oh, going to be. Here, our here's eye. the thing right now. I want I want everyone to like whoever has an Agdisa sub. I want you guys to put Agdisa devotion right yeah, now. If, Yes. Ignisus does have an emote for uh, this uh, Dedicated to this game. It's very fitting. Yes. But yeah, we're going to be giving up an eye, and we're also going to be giving up our tongue, and tongue. then we're going to be doing a blood donation as well. Yeah. So basically right now, the eye is supposed like to be... Donation. Yeah, the eye is supposed to be for giving uh, Dume Sing sight, or like better vision. Uh, later on, you will get better like sense of like... How you say it, like voice, and then afterwards it's just a uh, kind of like health. 
But right yeah. now it's just eyes right now. Like right here, he's like, he says, he's like, my daughter's soul is blinded. I offer my light. By the way, fun fact about this, uh, you have to do all the movement. Yeah. Uh, this isn't a cutscene. Like, it will keep going. You'll hold it there. He'll cry out in pain. You have to do the movement. It forces you to rip Th out This the is eyes. where I, I was saying earlier, this is where I also use controller because the QTE is a lot easier to pull off on controller. Yeah, than, it's all on controller. Yeah. Than on mouse because I'm. Watch me speed run mutilating my own eye. <laughs> um, I also want to I also want to let everyone know if they haven't got this yet. This isn't actually happening. He is not doing this to himself. Yeah. This is yeah. This all is all in a in dream. His mind. Yeah, all in a. In I mind, should mention kind of though, it is all in his mind. But the way the game frames it and the way it is, it is all in his mind. But he feels all the pain. Yep. Well, he Loki kind of deserves it. Just saying. Well, yeah, I'm just saying though, like even though it, like it doesn't physically like have lasting harm, he's feeling the pain of ripping out his own eye and ripping out his. Well, only um, you think what this next like tool does. Don't don't spoil don't don't spoil it yet. Like this could be used for a lot of things. It's a very nice. I tool. would love for you to explain to me what this could be used for. A grappling hook. No. No, no. Oh, by the way, I want to mention before devotion, I never knew that tongues were this long. I never knew tongues for that what long. To like, I've never it, seen a man rip out his own tongue. Well, you already said tongue. And all right, here comes the tongue part. Also, there's a lot of love and chat going on right now. I want to say thank you for yeah. that. I'm glad shout, shout out to the, the gifted sounds of a man ripping out his own yeah, tongue. Shout out to the gifted subs. You guys are awesome. Yep. All right. So yeah, like I said, he's gonna sacrifice his tongue so that he could give. Uh, voice to uh, to May Sing. Now, I was actually asking my chat one time when I was streaming this. I was like, which one would you rather do? Would you rather take out your eye or pull out your tongue? And a lot of people said the eye, which I would totally agree with. I mean, you do need Having tongue just to taste and talk. I like my tongue. The, the thing is, dude, the, that's the, a big tongue, dude. I don't know. Why man. would I you want to like pull out your tongue? I feel like it'd be easier to do the eye than the tongue. The tongue just seems way, way too extreme. I don't know. Only a madman would pick the tongue. Yeah, yeah. I 100% I, I like, agree. Someone would not want to eat and talk for like an eternity or something. Keep in mind, if you pull out your tongue, you can't eat the $10,000 fish. <laughs> you shouldn't be eating why the $10,000 fish. Why are we going back anyway? to the $10,000 fish? Because people keep talking because about the fish. Because he just ripped out her tongue. Ugh. All right, this is the last part. By the way, for the for the gore warning, we're pretty much good now. The last one's easy. <laughs> last one is just a uh, <laughs> real just quick. On the hand. Shout out to the person in chat that says, "Oh, lingua tacos." Like, I, I got you. <laughs> I, got, I got you. <laughs> All right, here comes. Hey, lingua's good. It here is. comes the the last part. Just the hand. I like how these are scissors, and he stabs himself with them. Like, it's 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 pretty cool. Yep. Right. Also, yes, yes, Ek, I said blood donation. He's donating blood. Hmm? I mean, technically, he also donated a tongue and an eye. Mm -hmm. Although, I don't think GDQ would take those prizes. <laughs> do not do not submit those. I'm going to make perlers. Is perler perlers okay? Also, it was raised in point as well. Apparently, if you remove your tongue, you just can't taste the $10,000 fish, but you can still eat it. Yeah, you can still I eat mean, it, but you can't uh, taste you're it. Not, you're not... Raw. <laughs> you can't taste and you can't talk at the same time. You can make noises. Well, you can make noises, but you can't talk. You can do you learn sign language at that point. Like, I guess yeah. sign language. You, you have other ways. But if you're talking, it's like the best, the best communication, I guess. Then you take out your eye instead of your tongue. <laughs> If you have yeah. the choice. I rather, I rather, I Is rather taste to... food. Rather than just to pull out my eye, uh, rather than, yeah, rather than rather than just to pull out my tongue. Sorry. Also, also this, we're gonna this he part, head bang. Also, yeah, head bang. Head bang. He slams it. He's bang. listening. He's listening to his daughter play hot, hot for teacher. So he's head banging. All right. So, right now we actually took take out the blindfold and oh, we are in like a dystopian kind of uh, uh, like atmosphere right now. I guess. Because right now, we are actually going to listen to the con artist or um, the uh, shaman. 
Duo, I just want to mention right now, this isn't a dystopian atmosphere. This is the ladies' apartment. It is the ladies' apartment. It's still kind of dystopian to me. It's not a dystopian. It's just a bad apartment. It looks crap. It looks like crap. You're insulting her apartment. Her apartment is crap. It looks like a dystopian atmosphere. She is a con artist. Yes, she does not have a nice apartment. Do I want to? Do I want to look around the apartment? Look at that. Look! Look at how dirty it is. Look at how well, bad she, it is. That's not dystopian. As, as, she just so <laughs> slow. As a con it's artist, they, per, they probably move from is place, place to place a lot. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So the recording that I picked up and actually we are listening to the recording at the moment is all the the recordings of the con artists actually scamming the customers at the moment. One of one of the one of the scams is actually. Um, this woman who wants uh, this man who has a wife to actually go to her, but um, in order to do that, uh, the 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 guy has to divorce the wife in order to go to her. And it's like a v very messed up thing, honestly. Yeah, this is all the the recordings of a uh, of um, I say the the scams and stuff. To answer the question in chat, yes, this is the shaman, the snake oil salesman, the car not the con artist. This is their apartment. All right, here comes the argument. <laughs> Sir, I will be recording this. Yes, sir, I will be recording this. So we're gonna right. uh, after we leave this room, we're gonna be coming up to what exactly happened. Uh, uh. To uh, do machine, uh, the doctor decided to, or not doctor, the <laughs> the con artist pretty much told uh, the dad to do something incredibly stupid. Mm -hmm. All right, this is about like a few minutes, like two minutes ish yeah. of uh, walking, but yeah, it's almost about to end. Uh, we kind of stop at a text later on, but uh, I will say time when uh, it happens. Yeah, this is about like a two minute kind of walk towards the end. We're gonna we're gonna slow we're gonna go real slow. Very slow. At this point I just like to like back my chair out uh, back my chair behind and then just like lay down because this is just walking. For about like two minutes. I should mention as well that even though time will be coming up soon, uh, we do have a whole ending that is absolutely a beautiful sequence that we will be showing. God, it, like, and we'll kind of uh, play the, um, we'll try to go to like the other cuts. I and mean, we have some time. This is the last run of the show today. So we'll, we'll have some time. Mm -hmm. So essentially the uh, con artist has pretty much told the dad to take, to like, oh, if you want to cure your daughter, um, take her into the bathroom in the bathtub and pour snake wine inside the tub and let her soak there for a week. Uh, close yeah. the door and do not open it ever. Like, just let her sit there and you can guess what happened after that. Being submerged in the snake wine for a week is just the dumbest idea ever, but the dad actually believes it because he's really gullible. Snake wine would I mean, not help compliment and wash down the 10K fish. We're not eating the fish. I'm gonna say I've had my fair share of experiences oh, yeah. of wine. So at this part bad. right here, it's actually the shaman not answering um, the dad anymore because uh, it's already been done. Whatever money has yeah. been given is already been done. Whatever um, like harm has been done, yeah, yeah. it's all so, gone. So she doesn't have to call anymore. He she has, lost she his wife. Answer. He lost his daughter. He lost his entire meaning of existence mm -hmm. and his devotion. Mm. Rip. <laughs> that is the title so, of the game. All right. So uh, time is so, coming up when we see the uh, su the first subtitle come on the screen. first ti uh, the first text that will come up uh, during this area. And like I said, this after this part is gonna be like a seven minute long kind of scene area. Um, time. Very nice. Good so, yeah. Run. Hey, everybody. Good job. Good job. I feel like we should just let good. this ending play out. And we, uh, let, let, we, do, you, oh, we do, do you guys want to talk like when the credits start rolling? You want to bring that back up? Uh, yeah, we'll go when the credits start going. Just kind of enjoy the beauty yeah. of this ending. It's kind of one of the best endings of all time in any game. This, um, this song it's pretty, is if you've been so along, good. Yeah. So. Everybody, please enjoy the end of the ocean. For once, I'm going to shut up for a second. I'm also going to like mute my mic. <laughs>
可惜爸爸最近都忙着拜拜念经，没办法陪我一起折。只要折到和故事里一样多的郁金香，我的病一定就会好了。病好后，我要继续练唱，变得更厉害，唱得更好。然后，总有一天，一定会实现我的生日愿望，变成大明星。让爸爸妈妈一起坐在电视机前面看我唱歌，大家开开心心的住在客厅。我好喜欢那个时候啊There we go. Uh, yeah. By the way, if anyone wants to know, uh, this song, it's uh, it's a song by No Party in Chao Dong. Really good band. Yeah. I love this band. Also, the next one is gonna be Lady at the Pier. <laughs> During this one, though, we're just gonna do all the outro yeah. stuff. We're gonna finish it on. I'm up. currently in tears right now. Give me a second. It's a sad song. It's a sad game. It's yeah. beautiful. So, hope you all enjoyed it. So, Joe, while we're finishing up, uh, feel free to, like, where can we find you on Twitch? Yeah, sure. Any shout-outs and all that? Uh, yeah, guys, if you uh, if you want to, you can find me on Twitch at Juhorse. That is J-U-H-Z-U-R-S-E. I go, I go by the name of Juho. Uh, shout-outs to Starwind for actually being on the couch and also, like, uh, 
helping me, I guess, more support. It was an honor. Um, thanks to Ekdysis for actually bringing this game because this game is, like I said, it's one of the most amazing games out there. Uh, one of the best indie horror games out there. If you have a chance to actually get this game, you get this game. Get this game, play this game. It's a good game. Amazing. Uh, I do want to give... Oh yeah, by the way. Yeah, cool. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Me first. Oh, okay. Uh, I want to give a huge shout outs to uh, Isofis. I, I said his name like a few times. Uh, Isofis is the guy who got the game, uh, got the physical copy of the game for me, and also for Ekdysis. Uh, he also did a lot of the, the routings and stuff like that, and he's also a huge part of uh, the speedrunning community just for me, because uh, speedruns, devotion, and detention, both games are made by uh, Red Candles game. And uh, yeah, shoutouts to the, the runners of devotion as well. Um, shoutouts to people like Punchy, Good Square, uh, the the Chinese runners and also the uh, Taiwanese runners as well. Um, yeah. Think. Right. Yeah. Okay. Fun fact, guys. Fun fact. Someone looked up in chat. Apparently, the arowana is three hundred thousand dollars. Three hundred thousand um, dollars. Correct. Apparently, someone looked it up. Three hundred thousand dollars fish. Oh yeah. Also. I would eat a three hundred. Also. Bucks. I I I want to do this at GDQ for a bit. Singapore uh, Pride. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, yes, I'm, a, I'm a runner from Singapore, so like, this is a rare chance that actually a Singaporean is going to be like running uh, on the GDQ platform. So like, I want to thank like the GDQ staff and also uh, GDQ in general just for bringing uh, a Southeast Asian runner, mainly a Singaporean, to the, uh, the stream. So yeah. Anyway, all that being said, I do want to thank you both for being here and being able to show devotion. While we're playing the credits and the music, this is a good outro theme, so I'm going to do it here. Uh, I do want to say thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed Devotion with Jewors and Starwin. Um, we're going to be all done for Speedruns of the Crypt uh, this week. Um, we'll be back in two weeks uh, with our bi-weekly show. We go along with Bargain Bin, so we've got two great shows. We have a lot of great shows. In fact, tomorrow will be the first step, and they'll be starting around 7 p.m. Eastern. A lot of good stuff. As well, if you happen to miss any of the runs from AGDQ 2021 online, or would like to watch any previous hotfixes, we have these all the time on youtube.com slash quick. You can check out the whole archive that we have there of all the old runs and shows. Uh, we're going to be finding a, uh, someone in the horror community to go raid, so if you'd like to join us for that, we'll be doing that. I'll play a brief ad for ending, but I just want to say thank you for watching this episode, Focus on the Rooms, and I hope that you had a lovely time with us. So thank you. I just realized office great. management, this one's... This one name that's called Karen in the office management. What? Yeah, that was like someone's name is Karen in the office management. I just find that funny. I'm face palming right now. I'm proud of them. <laughs> I'm proud of them. Mm hmm. Bye, chat. You've been great. See you later. Bye. Yeah.